It's the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Chicago Bears, both teams with 2-0 and records. And it should be a wild crowd because they love their football here in Minneapolis, and they think they are back. They think they are back because Bud Grant is back, and they beat the 49ers opening day. They came back last Sunday, and they beat Tampa Bay. So they're really fired up here in Minnesota. Bud Grant, of course, quit after the 1983 season, and the Vikings fell to 3-16 and last year. So they at least are off to a good start. The Bears, of course, won the Central Division last year, and they lost to the 49ers in the NFC Playoff Championship. Here is Jim McMahon. They would love to have him in there tonight. But again, he had trouble in last Sunday's game. He was in traction right after the game. He has not worked out this week. Mike Dicta has, has told us through their intermediary that he will only see action if there is a catastrophe at quarterback. And deep for the Minnesota Vikings. That's Buster Rhymes. He's a rookie fourth-round pick out of Oklahoma and set to kick off is Kevin Butler, another rookie, a fourth-round pick out of Georgia, the place kicker for the Bears. And Butler... Takes Rhymes into the end zone. Rhymes having problems with it there. I think he got confused as to where he was. He knew that if he was outside the goal line, he'd have to bring it upfield. He bobbled the ball into the end zone. And right away, starting deep in trouble, will be Minnesota. And out comes Tommy Kramer. And when he is on, he's as good as there is in football. We alluded to the game in 1982, and he was just tremendous in that game. There it is. Five touchdown passes. Absolutely Dead solid perfect. Last year, a lot of troubles. Missed nine games with a shoulder injury. Missed almost all of 1983 with a knee injury. But he's out there tonight. And it is a new team under Bud Grant, who out of the game for one year was asked to come back by owner, President Max Winter. He did that. There you go with the one setback offense. That's Alfred Anderson, a second year man from Baylor. Kramer. And they will probably blow the whistle. Kramer was in the arms of Dan Hampton. And let's see, will they mark it an incomplete pass? They could very well have blown the whistle and put the ball inside the five-yard line. All right, let's take a look at the defensive unit. Four down linemen, but it changes a great deal. The best defense in football a year ago. They were just amazing, giving up only 241 yards a game. They get into what they call a 4-6, but they do not have two of the key players that made that 4-6 so famous last year, but they do have defensive coordinator Buddy Curry. Second down and 10 now for the Minnesota Vikings. Anderson over the left side. He has stacked up. Richard Dent, Dan Hampton, they were both there. And you can better believe that Mike Singletary is going to get a lot of calls tonight. One of the best middle linebackers in all of football. So it's Tommy Kramer looking at a defense of the Chicago Bears that had 72 sacks last year. That's an NFL record. And that 241 that they allowed per team to gain the only other team that was under 300 were the Cleveland Browns. Just an amazing defensive year a year ago. Third down and eight. Tommy Kramer. A strong arm, but he has not been going deep thus far in the two games the Vikings have played. Flag is down. Kramer. Under throws. Anderson out of the backfield, but again, a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Our referee tonight is Dick Jorgensen. And there was movement at the line of scrimmage. Offside, indicated against the Bears. The down will remain the same. So it'll be a third down and about three. There is Mike Ditka, now in his fourth year. Former great player with these Chicago Bears. Last year, guided the Bears to their first championship of any sort since 1963 when they won the NFL championship, beating the New York Giants. How well I remember. I'm still puzzled why they didn't call it into grasp, and that should have been a sack on Kramer on first down. He certainly had Dan Hampton draped all over him. Third down and three. Kramer back. Gets time, trying to get it deep, and almost had that picked off. A great move by Leo Lewis, reaching over Dave Durison to avoid the interception. Good move, O.J. Excellent move. As you know, Leo Lewis had a good game uh, on Monday Night Football for us one time last year. He is not open on this play, so I'm a little surprised Kramer went to him, but he did an excellent job of playing defense, got in there and prevented the interception. Dave Durison in that lineup because Todd Bell, the all-pro safety, remains a holdout for these Bears. Greg Coleman punts away. This is Ken Taylor, a rookie from Oregon State. And Taylor is going to get the Bears really fine field position inside the 45 of the Minnesota Vikings. A 49-yard punt 
and a 21-yard return. And let's meet the offensive unit of the Chicago Bears. Out comes Steve Fuller. We told you about him. We watched him in San Diego. He made four starts a year ago. And then, of course, he was the quarterback of record throughout the playoffs. We had him on his four start in San Diego. He was hurt in that. They trotted out Rusty Leash, who started a two in the next game. Peyton, as a matter of fact, played quarterback in the next game. And then they brought in Greg Landry for the season's finale. They won both of those games, by the way, to win the Central Division and then move on to the NFC Championship. First down and 10, the Bears. 44-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings show a blitz, and Walter Peyton with sore ribs. And all moves inside the 40-yard line. Gain of almost four. Call it three. It'll be second and seven as we take a look at the 3-4 that the Vikings play a lot of. They're going to play a lot of 4-3 tonight. I think Bud Grant likes to go back to it. He more or less is more familiar with the 4-3 than the 3-4. And, of course, the big man is Scott Studwell, number 55, a linebacker. He annually leads these Vikings in tackles. Second and seven. Steve Fuller, who was a starter for three years with Kansas City before being traded to the Rams in 83. So what we have out here is not an inexperienced quarterback, it's Steve Fuller. That's Dennis Johnson just submarining under, and Peyton is held for about a yard. It'll be third and five, and it should put Steve Fuller into his first passing situation. I think it's a good move that they're running Walter earlier in the, in the game tonight because Minnesota is aware that Walter has those sore ribs and they may be trying to rough him up a little bit and Chicago wants Minnesota to realize that Walter is healthy. He wouldn't be playing if he didn't think he can play and they're running him early to let them know that, hey, they're going to see a lot of Walter tonight. And a third of five, Bud Grant drops into a four down lineman. Elshire, Martin, Mullaney, and Millard are the four down linemen. They'll try to pressure Fuller. There's a lot of time. And Fuller hook slides at the line of scrimmage. He had a lot of time, a flag is down, and maybe there was a little bit of a late hit against Fuller. Something happened. Here's Dick Jorgensen. Before the snap, offense. Well, we didn't see the flag until it was very late, but a delay of game is called against the Bears. <laughs> and that's why Steve went to the ground. Steve obviously heard the whistle well, no one else did, and he just simply went down. A good move on Steve's part. The Vikings are 2-0. They beat San Francisco on opening day, bringing football back to Minnesota, if you will. They were 3-16, as I mentioned, a year ago. They beat San Francisco 28-21. Then they beat Tampa Bay this past Sunday, 31-16. They have brought in four wide receivers. Bears backed up five, down remains the same. Ken Marjoram, the former All-American from Stanford, joins Willie Galt, the world-class speedster, number 83 for the Bears. Dennis McKinnon, the other wide receiver, along with Brad Anderson. Third down and ten. Fuller dumps it off to Peyton in the open field. Peyton takes off one tackler, Joey Browner, but he is taken short of the first down, just inside the 40-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Looked to me as Steve made his mind up a bit early that time. Minnesota was in his own coverage, and uh, Browner just simply dropped off to get Walter. I think he just threw it too soon. Punning unit for the Bears, and that means Maury Buford, who won this job in training camp. The all-time leading kicker for the San Diego Chargers, and the Bears gave away a 12th-round draft pick to get Buford. Darren Nelson, who does a little bit of everything for the Vikings and likes to do it all. Former Stanford great has dropped back. Number one draft pick three years ago. Griffin, of course, will be looking for the corner either left or right, and Nelson will be, will be trying to guess with him. It's off the side of Buford's good and not a good kick at all. In fact, not a good kick. There will be about a 15-yard pickup on this. So the Vikings with their first possession. Inside their 10-yard line, get a break as Maury Buford gets one off the side of his foot. It'll be the Vikings ball at their own 19-yard line, first and 10. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Vikings at the 19-yard line, first down and 10, and they, after they knocked off San Francisco in the opener here, <laughs> this town really got turned upside down. Bud Grant, who took the year off, Came back, replaced Les Steckel, who was here for a three and 13 season a year ago. 
but the Vikings have really not done it themselves. The teams have done it to the Vikings. Vikings have had 12 turnovers, and they had seven against the 49ers, and they won going away at 28-21. First down and 10. Tommy Kramer back. Has a lot of time. Dumps it off. That's the tight end, Steve Jordan, and Jordan is close to a Viking first down as Dave Dorison made the stop. But Jordan started out blocking on the play because it was an overship toward him. And after he let go of the man that was rushing, he simply fell off, and he was an outlet man there. And that's why they get the, the artist. You know, it looked as though Tommy Kramer had a lot of time, but I think he was anticipating he was not going to have a lot of time because, as I mentioned, these, these Bears had 72 sacks a year ago, and he might just have been a little antsy getting out of that pocket a little early. In any event, the first down is made by Steve Jordan. Vikings up close to their own 30-yard line. Four and a half minutes have elapsed here in the first quarter. No score as we watch Alfred Anderson. That started off really well in his rookie season a year ago and has kind of slowed down from a fast start as a rookie. We saw him, O.J., against the Redskins last year, and he had a tremendous night. Yes, he was running hard and positive, but I think he took a little beating last year. He sort of wore down as his season went on. Now, in that first play, that was an ugly play that they got for a first down, but that's the only way Minnesota will be able to win the night. They're going to have to have individual efforts like that. It may not be pretty, but that's what they're going to have to have to win. It's a Bud Grant football team. The offense is directed by Jerry Burns. He's been with Grant for a lot of years. And Tommy Kramer's back on second and nine. Picked off. That's Leslie Frazier. And the Bears almost got the turnover on the first series. This time they do get it, and Frazier brings it all the way back to the 38-yard line. Kramer upset with that one. He knew that was not one he should have let go. Let's take a look at it from his position, Joe. Well, it's a nice play action fake, but I'm afraid this is a pass to Tommy. Wish he wouldn't have thrown. It just simply throws a bad pass right into the defender's hands. Well, Leslie Frazier has given the Bears the first turnover of the night, and the Bears are at the 37-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. More than five minutes have played. Bears almost got it. an interception on the Vikings' first possession. So maybe Kramer a little shaky getting started here tonight. Peyton in the tailback spot for the Bears. Fuller. Reading the blitz, I believe it was an automatic. He goes to Galt. Galt gets the first down, down at the 25-yard line. There is Leslie Frazier, fine cornerback. He had a 29-yard touchdown of an interception last week or last Sunday off Steve DeBerg against Tampa Bay. Again, looking back at that last interception, we wonder why a quarterback of Kramer's stature throws uh, an interception like that, and I just have to believe he simply didn't see these offensive and defensive linemen are mighty big. Jumping around a little in that pocket also. Bears can make you do that. At the 25-yard line, first and 10. And this is Peyton following Matt Suey. And Walter Peyton, every time he gets a yard, is tacked on to his all-time rushing record. He's well over 13,000, coming in at night at 13,468 yards. But I think the most remarkable thing about Walter, O.J., you would know better than I, he has started 139 consecutive games. Now, for a running back to do that, considering Dorsett is the next closest to him at 67, that's truly amazing. It's a testament to Walk, uh, Walter's uh, conditioning. This guy works out harder than anybody, and he goes in the game in the proper frame of mind all the time. 31 years old, Walter Payton. That's the time remaining in the first quarter. No score. Second down and six. The ball near the 20-yard line of the Vikings. McKinnon in motion. Billy Galt, and Galt with that great speed just explodes inside the 10-yard line, down close to the 8-yard line before he's tackled by Studwell. Billy Galt only has had five receptions in the first two games. They've hit him twice already tonight. What a beautiful play this is. Mark Ports and Jim Covert get out there in the screen pass, and it looked like a couple of Mack trucks coming downfield. I'd get out of their way, too, if I was a defensive back. And Willie Galt, of course... Would have, perhaps, had he not signed the contract with the Bears, would have perhaps represented our country in the Olympics as either a sprinter or a hurdler in 1984. And Peyton, Peyton is strong, struggles to the six-yard line. It's about two and a half out of it. 
That's typical Walter. He always looked like a pinball machine to me, like a ball bouncing around. I don't think there's ever been a great running back that gets hit as much as Walter, but he is so strong and he's so competitive, he just bounces off guys and breaks tackles. It's the first game many, many years ago. And right now, Walter has traveled on the ground over seven miles, if you can believe that. And considering how he's averaging a little over four yards of pop, he's gone over seven miles, getting knocked down every four and a half yards. Fuller, the old option play, trying to get it out to the outside to Matt Suey. He did not do so. Gets inside the five-yard line, where it'll be third down goal to go. Fuller made the right decision on that play by keeping the ball of Willie Till, number 37 from Minnesota, made an excellent play tackling. So sure, Joe, I'd be running that if I only have two one quarterbacks. quarterback. One <laughs> of them's a rookie from Ohio State sitting on the bench. Vince Lombardi once put that play in with the Giants. When he first came, Charlie Connolly, Connolly would never run it. <laughs> Charlie was always a smart quarterback. It was in our game plan every week. No way Charlie was going to run that. Well, I don't know whether they're complaining because of the sound. Apparently, Steve Fuller feels that his teammates cannot hear. And being a third down and goal to go at the four-yard line, he probably is concerned that he might have to come up with an automatic down there. And he wanted to make sure everyone could hear it. Well, I can guarantee you it's going to be a lot louder when he goes back up to the line of scrimmage. Interesting. Uh, we have a piece coming up at halftime. I think you'll find quite interesting dealing with the use of radio headsets and microphones by the quarterback. They experimented with it in spring training this past season as they did with also video replays of calls. And we understand there is a movement alive now to bring that back for the playoffs this year. Well, they're trying to quiet the crowd. We had a play, as a matter of fact, reversed out in San Francisco in a preseason game. And Dick Schaap is going to talk about those two experiments during the preseason at halftime. Very interesting piece. Third down goal to go. There's Mike Ditka looking on. And he was playing. He'd walk up there and get it on with him. Well, there's nothing anyone can really do about it. It's just kind of sad. I think Steve Fuller is just going to go ahead and run the play. Oh, Steve's a veteran. He's been around. He's not going to make the mistake of uh, snapping the ball or have the ball snapped with the noise going on. And the Viking players are trying to quiet it down. There really, uh, there really isn't that much noise at this point. Now we're starting to get some. Now we have a different decibel count. Beginning to boo Steve Fuller. Steve Fuller stepping away once again. Third down goal to go. In case you forgot. Walter Payton. Payton slowed up first by Elshire. And then he turns right in to the pursuit. And he'll lose a couple of yards. And we will see Kevin Butler. Well, that's typical of Minnesota this year. They've given up a lot of yards. They've been outgained by both teams that they played previous to the night, but when they get down around their own goal line, they toughen up, and they make the big play defensively. Here's Kevin Butler, the rookie fourth-round draft pick out of Georgia. He had a great career at Georgia. Did some miraculous things. whole bunch of NCAA records that he set. It's three of five thus far in two games, and this will be a 24-yard attempt. Fuller, the quarterback, is the holder. And Fuller with a good hold. That ball was low. He spun it around, got the laces forward, got it up, and Butler makes good from 24 yards out. And we have our first score of the game. 24-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. George Buster Rhymes is deep for the Minnesota Vikings. They are down by three. Set to kick off is Kevin Butler. Well, he was le leading the NFL until that last kickoff return that opened the game. Had about eight yards on that one. And he just about got himself benched on it, too. Made a mistake right at the goal line. I don't think he knew whether he was in the end zone or out of it. Bobbled the ball and got it back out to about the three or four yard line. Butler with a fine kick. Puts Ryan's in the corner once again at the two yard line. 
Browns found a little opening out over the 30-yard line to the 31. Hit there by Cliff Thrift. 29-yard return. And, well, the Vikings were 28th and dead last on defense a year ago. These were their last six games. First time in NFL history a team lost six games in a row by 30 or more points. That's hard to do, really. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There was a lot of people that felt in training camp last year when they were going through that boot camp of uh, Les Steckles that it would show at the end of the season, and it certainly did. He gave up 30 points or more in the final six games. At the 31-yard line, first and 10, the Minnesota Vikings. Anderson, Darren Nelson, the setbacks. Anderson, 46. Nelson is 20. Kramer's in trouble. Steps back into the pocket. And fires. Gets it to the tight end, Steve Jordan, and Jordan has made another big play. He has a Viking first down up close to midfield. They'll mark it at the 48-yard line, and Kramer made it happen, Joe. Oh, I like these play-action fakes in the first down, play-action passes. You see our tight end, Jordan, running across underneath the linebackers. The Bears are playing run that time. I hope they throw more passes on first down. There's Jordan. Fourth year out of Brown. Leading receiver coming in to tonight in the first two games. At the 48-yard line, first down, Minnesota. Alfred Anderson, and Anderson hit right at midfield. Gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down at eight. The Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. The Vikings with this man back, Bud Grant, now in his 18th year. Took the Vikings to four Super Bowls in the first 17 years of his first tenure here. 11 Central Division championships. I'm Frank Gifford along with Joe Namath and O.J. Simpson. And the only score thus far in the game, if you've just joined us, a 24-yard field goal by the Chicago Bears, Kevin Butler. The Bears on top, 3 to nothing. Both teams with 2-0 records early in the season. A second and eight. Kramer dinks it to Darren Nelson, who makes two good moves. And Nelson, that'll be about four of the toughest yards he'll have to pick up. Hammered twice. Short of the first down, but it will be about four yards short. A good effort by Nelson. Yes, that's what they're trying to do. Take advantage instead of running on first and second down. Get the short passes and hope people like Nelson can make something happen. Nelson did the best he could on that play, but you got to say something about that bear swarming defense. You won't see Mike Singletary miss many tackles, and that is a good swarming defense. They rallied around the ball. Aaron Nelson, brilliant career at Stanford, number one draft pick here in 1982. Big year in 83, over 600 yards as Tommy Kramer goes up on top of 35 and wide open. Mike Jones. Jones attracts a lot of bears, but not until he gets the first down inside the 35-yard line. Mike Singletary all the way back there to be in on the tackle. Look at him again. Third year out of Tennessee State. Last year was a starter, and of course has been replaced this year by Anthony Carter, the Michigan All-American. But Jones with a good move. Now look, he spins back and he spun right into Mike Singletary. That'll get your attention and rattle your teeth. 33-yard line, first down. Carter, number 81, split to the right. Leo Lewis up at the top of your screen, number 87. Aaron Nelson. Good running again by Nelson. Hit hard, but he squirms up to the 30 for a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Ted Brown comes into the game, number 23. Good receiver out of the backfield, Ted Brown. Darren Nelson also a fine receiver out of the backfield. Kramer keeps getting away from Bears. Tries to get it to Brown down the sidelines. Durison, who probably has the same scouting report that we have, knew that Brown would like to work out of the backfield, and Kramer is genuinely upset. Well, I think he took a lick a little late that time, at least in Tommy's mind. Richard Dent got back there. You know, going back to the first pass of the game when we talked about the in the grass rule. Now let's watch Dent here. He's on the right side of your screen. Richard Dent number 95. Well I guess we won't get to see it but in the grass rule means that the defender must have control of the quarterback. Third and six shotgun for Minnesota and Tommy Kramer. Again pressure. Fires it, gets it to Mike Jones again, and Jones will have another first down, and Tommy Kramer is beginning to find the mark, and he has been chased out of the pocket almost on each occasion. Well, Kramer 
Kramer is beginning to look like a, a former Viking Fran Tarkenton. I didn't realize he was this adept at scrambling in the pocket, but he's done an excellent job of finding and making time for himself, finding his receiver and getting the ball to them. Another ugly play, but it's working. But effective. With more than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Bears leading the Minnesota Vikings 3 to nothing. Both teams undefeated in the early going of this 1985 season. Darren Nelson. Got a clock from Brown, but that pursuing Bear defense holds it just inside the 15-yard line. A gain of a couple, Mike Hartenstein, the defensive left end for the Bears, the key man on the stop. Well, they ran that time just into the strength of the defense. The Bears' defensive line was overshifted to the strong side. They had three big linemen over there, and then, of course, Dave Dorison, as you mentioned, came across the line of scrimmage and turned him in. Second down and eight. I mentioned that... Todd Bell, the all-pro safety for the Bears, is, remains a holdout. As does Al Harris, a fine defensive linebacker. Bears unable to come to terms with those two players. Second and eight, Kramer's back again. This time, Kramer will not get away from McMichael. They have been pressuring almost every play. This time, they got Tommy back at the original line of scrimmage. As a matter of fact, they'll lose from the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 11. Well, you credit Richard Dent on that play, number 95, because Kramer wanted to go to Leo Lewis. Leo was open. Dent beat his man at the line of scrimmage, and he jumped up in the air and took the passing lane away from Kramer. That's the first time this season that Tommy has been sacked. Third down and 11, and a tough down. This is when the Bears, who love to rush the passer, just pin their ears back, turn it all loose. They have the four down linemen, as you can see. Dent, Hampton, McMichael, and Hartenstein. Kramer dancing around, trying to find a receiver. He does, gets it to Mike Jones. Jones will be close to a first down. Perhaps short, Fensick and Sean Gale made the stop on Jones, but again, Kramer, with all kinds of pressure, all kinds of bears all around him, was able to get it off, and I think they're going to be just a little bit short, perhaps a yard short of the first down to bring up fourth down, and will we see Jan Stenerud? Out he comes. The old fella. Most prolific field goal kicker in the history of the game at 42 years old. He has now kicked 359 of these little jobs. And a lot of big jobs in there, too. I'll never forget my rookie season. He was in the league a few years at that point. And in Buffalo, we played against Kansas City. And he kicked 10 field goals in the two games that we played him. Beat us both times with field goals. Good athlete. Born in Norway, was a good ski jumper. 20 of 23 last year, 9 of 9 from the 40 or inside. Ray Coleman provides a snap. And we have a tie game with 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Stenerud is good from 25 yards. Earlier, the Bears were good from 24. We'll be back in a moment. There's a sellout for tonight's game. That's nothing new here in Minnesota. They've been selling out for many years. Had a brief setback a year ago with the 3-13 record, but they feel they're back on the track with Bud Grant back as head coach, walking the sideline once again. Willie Gould has dropped deep for the Bears. He's back there with Dennis Gentry. Gault out of the University of Tennessee. Came within one of an NCAA record returning kickoffs for touchdowns. He had five. Anthony Davis, USC, had six. This is Gentry. They kick away from Galt. Not surprising. And Gentry up close to the 30-yard line. Hit there by Carl Lee. It'll be first and 10, the Chicago Bears. First and 10 at the 30-yard line, the Bears. In a 3-3 ball game with just three seconds remaining in the first quarter. Fuller. This is Peyton. And Peyton always seems to know just about where he is. Did not juke around a whole lot then. He wanted the first down. He's very close to it as he's hit by David Howard. And there is the end of the first quarter with a score tied at three. We'll be back at the Metrodome in just a few moments. Vikings and the Bears, both of the Central Division. They used to call it the Black and Blue Division. They have struggled over the past few years. And there is quarterback Jim McMahon. 
think he really genuinely felt he was going to play tonight, Joe. He told me that nothing would keep him from playing in this football game tonight. Well, he must have forgotten about Coach Mike Ditka. <laughs> Obviously, Mike has other ideas. Mike is a firm believer that the man has to practice during the week to be ready for the game, and Jim simply couldn't practice. There's Mike Ditka. Looking out as quarterback Steve Fuller, who has replaced Jim McMahon, looks over a second down and ten. Fuller fires underneath and is complete. Just his tight end, Emory Moorhead, and Moorhead has a fair first down. He's in Viking territory near the 47. Look for Moorhead to be quite active tonight. Uh, this Chicago team, normally when McMahon is in there, he doesn't go to the tight end too often, but they say when Fuller is in there, he'll throw to the backs and the tight end uh, a little more often, and it's paying off here in the second quarter with Moorhead, who we saw open all night in the game that we had Chicago and Dallas in the preseason. It was a well-thrown ball. Chris Martin had Moorhead covered like a blanket, and Fuller hit him absolutely in stride and kept the ball out of Chris Martin's reach. The first down is inside the 47-yard line of the Vikings. This is Matt Suey. Walter Payton with the block out front. It was Tim Newton sliding out. Big Tim Newton from his nose tackle position to take part in that tackle. Gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight as we look at the first quarter stats. Just a lot of jockeying back and forth. Minnesota with a slight edge. And we have a 3-3 game. You know, this is the third straight play, and uh, only the first three plays that Minnesota's used a 3-4 defense, and they've crossed up the Bears, I believe, in their running game. I think Bud Grant kind of likes that 4-3. He'll go with whatever he has in terms of personnel. No question. A He's fine coach over the years. He's back to the 4-3 now. Second down and eight. Moorhead, number 87 in motion. The blitz is on. Fuller with a lot of time. Trying to get the ball to Willie Galt. And Willie Teal was right with him. And that's a tough man to stay with. He has that 9 nothing speed. Well, Galt appeared to have good position on Teal. If Fuller could have gotten the ball out front, I think Willie would have ran away from Teal and wouldn't got it. But it wasn't a well-thrown pass. Willie didn't make a particularly good adjustment to the ball either. Third down and eight. Dennis McKinnon, 85. Ken Marjoram, good receiver underneath. Number 82 is in there along with Willie Galt. We'll watch Fuller from the shotgun. Peyton is the checkoff man and Fuller goes to him. This time, Walter can't break it loose. They like to dump it off to Walter because he's such a good open field runner, but that time, Joey Browner, who's off to a tremendous year here in Minnesota, made the stop right up there in Walter's face. Browner with one interception and a 15-yard touchdown run against Tampa Bay. He recovered three fumbles against San Francisco, and that tied an NFL record for fumbles recovered in a single game. He's back where he belongs. They're leaving him in one position, and he's turning into a major star, Joey Browner. Ari right, Buford, you had a quick look at Darren Nelson. Used to do a lot of this at Stanford. All around athlete, Stanford. Plus three years for over 1,000 yards and also three consecutive years of 50 receptions or more. This time they let it bounce and it is killed close to the 10 yard line by Calvin Thomas, who was hustling down. Nobody has done it as well and as long as this man. All-time leading rusher. It really is amazing, but the NFC Central Division not been one of your tougher divisions over the past few years. They've had a combined record of 102 wins and 161 losses and two ties to teams from outside of their division. And Detroit, of course, the other team that has a 2-0 record. Last year, Central Division teams played what did they play? 30 teams out, 20, 39 teams outside of the division. They lost, they won 11 and lost 28. First and 10, Minnesota, and Kramer is back again. Leo Lewis is there at the 20 yard line, short of the first down. Leslie Frazier on the coverage. Yeah, they got some slight outside receivers. Over on the right side is Anthony Carter, the USFLer. He had such a great career with first Michigan, then at Oakland. He's 5'11", 162 pounds, and Leo Lewis is 5'8", 172, as 
Dick Jorgensen is going to call for a measurement. But they will come across the middle. O.J. mentioned that a moment ago that Leo Lewis had a big game against the Redskins last year. We know what Anthony Carter can do. Well, you know Leo Lewis has to be a favorite of Bud Grant's as it appears they have the first down. Bud played with his father up in Canada, and his father was Leo Sr. is a member of the Canadian Hall of Fame. Football Hall of Fame, that is. But, of course, he's not in the Hall of Fame, and I assume he is. He should be. He had a great coaching record in 10 years at Winnipeg, winning the Grey Cup four times. He was all pro up there for four years, having been all pro in the NFL back in 1952 as a wide receiver. First down, Minnesota, Alfred Anderson. Turns right into a rather violent collision at the line of scrimmage. Squeaks maybe a yard out of it. Dan Hampton was there initially, and coming up quickly was Gary Fensick. Gary and Dave Durison kind of swapped positions that time just before the snap of the ball. The strong safety went into the hole, and Gary and uh, Fensy came all the way up. Uh, it must have confused someone with the Minnesota offense. So they'll do that a lot. Sometimes they'll switch positions, the defensive back, with a down lineman, and you'll find people like Dave Hampton, a defensive end at 267 pounds, trying to cover a receiver. They'll tell you, only Buddy Curry knows what they're doing. <laughs> that could well be. Buddy Ryan, rather, the defensive coordinator. Second down and nine. Kramer in trouble again. They have really been pressuring Kramer. Now a flag goes down. It was McMichael yeah. getting to Tommy Kramer. Intentional grounding. Number nine. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. And loss of down. That's a tough Third one. Down. That loss of down really kills you. That's one of the worst penalties in football, and why it happens, I don't know. I played football 13 years professionally, had one intentional grounding penalty called on me, and I literally hit George Sire in the foot with the ball. It was a bad call. That's why you're walking on the <laughs> knees that you're walking on, Joe. You got a point there. Third down and 20. Ted Brown, good receiver out of the backfield. He's the single back. They give him the draw play. Makes one tackle, but he doesn't get away from Hartenstein, and held far short of first down yardage and the punting unit will come on. Well, Minnesota realized they can't get anything consistently going Ooh. against this defensive team. What they have to do is when they get penalties like that or get sacked, not panic. Just wait for the big play later on. Well, Minnesota stopped themselves a couple of times with the interception and he threw it right to the back and, uh, of course, here with the penalty. Here's Greg Coleman to punt. Dennis McKinnon, the wide receiver, is back for the Bears. Coleman hits it low. McKinnon steps up and takes it at the 43-yard line. Good move by McKinnon. Stepped right up, pulled the special teams that come, was coming down the field right into him and then tried to get it to the outside, and he almost broke a big one. Chris Dolman, the number one draft pick, is there for Minnesota to make the stop. But once again, good field position for the Bears at the 49 of the Vikes. Back in Minneapolis as Steve Fuller steps into the Bears huddle. First down and 10. The Bears inside the 49-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. 10-23 remaining in the half with the score tied at three. A pair of field goals. That's all the scoring thus far in a hard-hitting defensive game thus far. Fuller is a quarterback in relief to Jim McMahon who has a neck spasm and a back spasm. Could not start tonight. Fuller. There's one loose to Willie Galt. And Galt will have another Bear first down near the 30-yard line. John Turner made the stop as Keith Nord we understand might possibly have a broken thumb. He would be the free safety ordinary, ordinarily. But John well, they, Turner is in there now. They're giving Willie a lot of room here. And would Willie you? has gotten some <laughs> criticism over the years that he doesn't come back to the ball. He doesn't catch these types of passes well. He's caught three thus far this game. And I think what they're doing is trying to set him up for the big play later on. Willie Teal, of course, giving Willie Galt a lot of room. Galt, world-class sprinter of Tennessee, tremendous speed. And he gets a bear first down near the 30-yard line. Fuller back once again. Goes to the tight end, the rookie out of UCLA. That's Tim Reitman. Made this team in training camp with a couple of good efforts. He picks up four yards. It'll bring up second down and six. Well, Minnesota's gone back to that 3-4 defense, and they're just ready, getting ready to change right now. I see they're bringing out some more linemen to play the 4-3. But the pass completion to go, this defensive uh, people didn't give Willie Teal any help. He had no under, underneath help at all. That's why Galt was so open underneath. That's the time remaining in the half. We're tied at three. Fuller is looking over a second down and six. 
Vikings continue with four down linemen. There was movement, but no flag. Walter Payton. And Payton will have a bare first down, doing his thing. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if you're young and you're playing this game, don't do what he does. Just watch it and enjoy it, because Walter carries that ball like only he can carry it, and he's not a fumbler. Over the years, he has mastered that. He uses it for his own balance. He carries it in not only the wrong side, but in one hand. Yeah, it is on the wrong side. Normally, you want your body between uh, the ball and the defense, but Walter has been doing it for, what, 13, 14 thousand yards thus far, so I don't think it's our place to criticize him. Heading on towards 14,000 yards with Walter Payton, looking for his 100th touchdown. He needs two. He could get it tonight on first and ten. This is Calvin Thomas. Thomas is stacked up after he gets inside the 15, close to the 14. Gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Chris Dolman, the rookie first-round draft pick from Pittsburgh, was in on that stop. Well, the, we're reaching the Vikings' comfort zone right here, believe it or not. They've been giving up yards to their previous two opponents. The 49ers had 29 first downs against this team, but somehow when they get near the Minnesota goal line, they'll come up with that big play, so let's see if they can do it again. Second and eight. Bears have beaten the Vikings three straight in this Central Division rivalry of the NFC. Everyone in the pattern, both backs are out, and that means... Fuller is going to have to hurry it. He tried to get it off. Mullaney was right there. They are going to say this time he was in the grasp. Joe, I don't understand it. They play ball when they get their backs to the goal line. Well, they say the rule again is if the defender has the man in the grasp and has control of him, well, what is control? Fuller still gets the pass off here, and number 80, Tim Reitman, nearly caught it. Fuller's still struggling. Well, he was in the grasp. He sure no was. And the sack is back at the 22-yard line. It'll be third down and 15. Moorhead, Brad Anderson, 86. McKinnon, 85. Those are the wide receivers along with Willie Gold, 83. And Ken Marjoram, 82. And Fuller works from the shotgun. Peyton will look for the blitz. If it doesn't come, he'll drift into the flat as a checkoff. And did he run out of time? Oh, it looked like a little movement by that offensive line, but could be too much time. Old start you number 79 offense. Still third down. That's Kurt Becker. He's in there playing hurt. Probably looking for a little bit of an edge. He has a bruised tailbone. 738 remaining here in the half. Bears and the Vikings. They're tied at three. Hard hitting game. Nothing dramatic on offense, but it has provided some really tough hitting, as it usually does. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Third down, long yardage. The ball after the penalty, back at the 27-yard line. They need to get to the six for a first down. Right for Galt here. Going deep for Galt. And it's picked off. Once again. Good effort. Carl Lee was back there. He started as a free safety. Lost that job this year to Keith Nord. Nord is out of there tonight. Lee came in. And roaming about from free safety, he gets the intercept. Certainly a bad decision on Steve Fuller's part. They had an opportunity for three points down here in close. They had two men that time covering golf. Throw the ball away. Don't put it up for grabs. You're outnumbered over there in the corner. Another turnover for the Vikings. They had 12 in their first two games. Seven times they got it from San Francisco. Five times from Tampa Bay. I just have to believe that Jim McMahon would make a difference in this game, and I'm sure the Chicago Bears feel that way. They're certainly not going to give up on Fuller, but McMahon has a way of making things happen out there. Good things, positive things. Lee with the interception, and the Vikings have the ball near their own 20-yard line on the touchback. Just inside. That's a lateral, and it goes to Darren Nelson. He handles it. Good move on the outside, and Nelson out over the 25 to the 26. Gain of six as Otis Wilson provided the stop. Aaron Nelson, 5'9", 185-pounder. He did so many brilliant things at Stanford University. They use him in a lot of ways here. He was Bud Grant's number one pick in 1982. Had a tough year last year, but in 83, he was spectacular. Second down and four. Once again, a reminder at halftime, We'll be talking with Eric Dickinson. We'll be talking to him live, and we'll be watching him Monday night against the Seahawks. Kramer 
Anthony Carter was floating around down in the area, but Kramer had to release that ball long before Carter had made his break. Now that was the problem that time. Anthony Carter just waited too long to make his break, and of course Tommy had to release. It looked like Carter was open, but it was way too late. Well, that's a pretty gutsy call, whoever is making the call, and I assume Jerry Burns, he usually does from the sidelines, but I <laughs> think that the pressure that Tommy's been getting throughout this entire first half might preclude trying to go up too deep. He had to hurry that one. Third down and four from the shotgun. Here come the folks. And Kramer, seeing that they were coming, has to hurry it. He underthrows Leo Lewis. It's fourth down. We'll see the punter, Greg Coleman. Yeah, Tommy is certainly upset with himself. He had him wide open. He read the coverage beautifully. Just threw a lousy pass. Been a tough couple of years, as I mentioned. Started only nine last year. Missed 13 in 83. But when he was healthy, 79, 80, 81, he shattered a lot of records up here. Big records set by Fran Tarkenton. He can get very hot. Here's Greg Coleman. McKinnon respecting Coleman. He bobbles the ball. Coleman still bobbles the ball. A flag is down. The ball is covered by the Bears. John Gale has the football, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. This was recovered by the illegal formation. Offense only six men on the line of scrimmage. Decline. First off. Another turnover for the Vikings, and here in the early part of the season, they've been living on it. They really have. They've been outgained 838 yards to 530. They've averaged only 2.6 rushing, and they've allowed 5.6 against them, but they now have 14 turnovers. And that's the first fumble, we understand, of Greg Coleman's career. And perhaps the first time he kicked it in that particular position. Dive on that football. First down and 10. Peyton, an idea of just how strong Peyton is. He just hammers his way for a couple of extra yards to the 15-yard line, gets seven out of it. It'll be second down and three, and there's Sean Gale. Fine-looking defensive back prospect in his second year out of Ohio State. They use him a lot back there as a fifth back. Second and three is Walter Peyton. Pounds his way to the 15-yard line. Of your screen is Dennis McKinnon. Willie Galt is to the right. Walter Payton. And Payton near the five yard line. They'll mark it at the six. John Turner there defensively for the Vikings. And it'll be first down, goal to go. The thing you gotta like about Walter is when he gets near the goal line, he never wastes any yards. A lot of backs would cut outside here, get tackled. Walter picked up five extra yards because he went straight ahead, going for that goal line. And I know the thing Walter has to like is Jim Covert and Mark Bortz. Boy, they really opened up a hole over there on the left side. Two plays in a row. First down, goal to go, the Bears. We're tied at three with a little more than five minutes remaining in the first half. Both teams 2-0 into tonight's game. Peyton. Peyton pecking, looking, and then turning on the power. Gets down to close to the two-yard line. David Howard, former USF fellow with the LA Express, made the stop, number 99. He's been busy tonight. You know, there's an old rule that uh, quarterbacks use. If you have something going for you, keep after it. That's three plays in a row. They ran Walter to that left side, and they're continuing to gain yardage. You don't want to go to the well too often, but let's see if they can stop you. You know, keep running there until they do stop you. Second down, goal to go. The ball at the two-yard line. This is just about over-the-top range for Walter Payton. He can fly just about as well as Marcus Allen. time Peyton tried to just bull his way in gets to the one yard line where it'll be third down goal to go Peyton with 98 career touchdowns well when you want to back to go over the top you normally will line him up in that short eye formation so he can get sort of a launching pad going for him a little runway on that play there was not much Walter could have done there was not much blocking on the left side of that Chicago offensive line and Walter got the most out of it third down goal to go you mean we went to the well one too many times? Uh -huh. 
Well, we may see him take off on this one, though. They are in that deep short in the eye. eye. Reitman is in there, the other tight end. He never had a chance. He wanted to go up. Joey Browner came around the horn, made the hit. It'll be fourth down and decision time for Mike Ditka. Hey, he was trying to launch himself over the top. And I think Ditka has made his decision. Let's get three more. Kevin Butler has come out, and what a great defensive effort. They had surged across, beaten the Bears on the offensive charge, and gave Browner time to come around the horn and make the stop before Peyton could even launch it. Here's Kevin Butler on a 20-yard attempt. The Bears to take the lead. Steve Fuller's the holder. And the Bears lead it 6 to nothing. with 3.25 remaining in the half. A bit of a victory for the Vikings defense down in close. That's Joey Browning. He's been a happening in Minnesota this year. He's the guy that forced that fourth down play, forced the fumble early in the game, and he's the guy who played with Ronnie Lott and Dennis Smith when he was at USC as a sophomore, and he's really come into his own this year. Pretty rapid company. Also had a touchdown return of an interception off the Berg against Tampa Bay. Had three fumbles against the 49ers. Rising superstar. There is the kick of Kevin Butler. Buster Rhymes will bring it out. Big opening. You can see it developing. And Rhymes just did make it. Split the seam and he's out to the 36 yard line. Kevin Butler had to make the save for the Bears. First and 10 at the 36 yard line. Aaron Nelson right side. Ball coming loose, but I think they've blown it dead at the 39-yard line. It'll be a three-yard pickup. Second down and seven. 3.05, and the clock is moving, and at the moment, the Bears leading 6-3. to three. You know, you mentioned that Seattle game. I'm really looking forward to getting up there. They're, with Warner back, they are an explosive offense. Chuck Knox has got that team thinking Super Bowl this early in the season. They really are a good football team. Darrell turn on the outside. That's going to do nothing the way he's developing but help. Steve Largent, not that he needs it. Two remarkable receivers now with the Seahawks. Second long, Kramer's back, here comes the full blitz. Kramer ducked under it, and of course a single coverage downfield, and Leo, or rather Anthony Carter, gets his first reception of the night. Good move again by Kramer. Dan Hampton was all over Kramer. He was the main bear that Kramer had to get under, number 99. Well, Kramer should have been there. On the blitz, number 50. Durison, the safety coming. Good move by Kramer, ducking right under Dan Hampton. And heads up play by Anthony Carter. I don't know what his pass pattern was, but he saw the blitz, looked back inside, and Kramer was able to get it to him. It'll be first down for Minnesota. They're at the 45-yard line of the Chicago Bears, and we get the two-minute warning. Tommy Kramer, he's been hassled and harassed, but he has the bikes on the move. Two minutes remaining in the first half. The Bears lead the Minnesota Vikings 6-3 in a Central Division matchup here in the NFC. Tommy Kramer has been all over him tonight. He's ducked under I don't know how many Bears to get completions. They have six first downs to the Vikings. All of them have come from passing. Kramer is 8-50, 92 yards. He's had the one interception. At the 45-yard line of the Bears, Kramer back under pressure again. Tries to get it deep, and Richardson almost intercepted. Bobbled the ball down the sidelines as Kramer was trying to go for the bundle to Leo Lewis. Well, this is the second time Leo Lewis had to play defense instead of offense and prevented an interception, as you can see. It appears as if Richardson was going to get control of this ball, but Lewis, nice defensive play, Leo. It was, and he did just that in the first half, keeping away from an interception. Second down and 10. Anthony Carter goes up. Top of your screen, 1,300 yards we had this past season for Oakland and 70 receptions. That, of course, in the USFL. Kramer fires quickly to the tight end. This is Malarkey, and Malarkey has a first down inside the 30-yard line of the 29-yard line, 16-yard pickup. Gary Burns, offensive coordinator, sending the plays in. 
Been with Bud Grant for 17 years. Not happy at all last year. Has announced his retirement midseason under Les Tackle. Bud Grant came back. And with him, of course, Jerry Burns. And this is Jerry Burns' offense. Throw it underneath. Dink it here, dink it there. Every now and then throw one deep to keep him honest. That's the time remaining in the half. And the Bears lead 6-3. to three. Kramer fires a shot. It's complete to Carter. And Anthony Carter, who looks so fragile out there, works for another Viking first down near the 15-yard line. Well, he does look fragile. At 162 pounds, 5'11". But he gets the job done as Minnesota calls timeout. They have two timeouts remaining. They have a first down inside the 15-yard line of the Bears and Kramer. We'll talk it over with Bud Grant. Bud Grant is back. This football team is a different looking football team. There's no question about that. When Bud left in 83, he actually, in the prior six years, had been just coaching at 500. He was 44 and 44 in the six years prior to leaving after the 83 season. So in all honesty, he didn't leave Les Steckle a whole lot to work with. But a 3 and 13 brought him back. On first and 10, the Vikings at the 15-yard line of the Bears. And Kramer tries to get it into his wide receiver, Leo Lewis. Mike Richards was there. It'll be second down and 10. Dan Hampton again pressuring Tommy Kramer. That was a good play. I like the play. It was a terrific effort on Mike Richardson's part to break that up, but I like the design of the play to sprint out to get away from the rush. Mike Richardson, second round pick in 83. He has really developed into a fine cornerback. you got to be a good cornerback with the Bears because they leave you out there so often alone. That'd be pretty good if a man-for-man -man coverage. Second down and 10. That's the time remaining in the half. Kramer trying to get the six. In the corner, that's Anthony Carter. Touchdown. No flags. Well thrown ball and Carter in a good sprint. 14-yard touchdown. Well, Frank, you just said it. They left the cornerback out there all by himself, and he got burned. Hard not to with a good passer, and you give him time to throw. It's tough to cover any top receiver man for man. That ball was perfectly thrown. It wasn't that bad a position by Richardson. He knew he knew he was beat, though. Well, Carter beat him at the line of scrimmage when he avoided the push. When he avoided the bump at the line of scrimmage, the defender was already beaten. Here's John Stenerud. And the Vikings have the lead for the first time tonight. So effortless. His first NFL touchdown. Of course, he had so many of them. This past season at Oakland alone, he had 14. Over 1,300 yards on 70 receptions. But he's back. offensive effort on the part of the offensive team to move that football but keep in mind twice the Bears had first down goal to go inside the 10 yard line and they were held twice to three points on each occasion. Tom Stenner at the kickoff. Willie Gall is back with Dennis Gentry. This will be Willie Gall. Dangerous return man, but the Vikings covered well. Hustling down there was John Turner. And with 42 seconds remaining in the first half. The Bears lab the ball inside their own 30-yard line. First and 10, they have three timeouts. At halftime, a reminder once again, we are going to be talking with Eric Dickerson of the Rams, who of course reported prior to last weekend, did not play against the Eagles, but we will see him in Seattle on Monday night when the Rams meet the Seattle Seahawks. Both of those teams, by the way, are 2-0. We've got a pair of 2-0 teams tonight, and we'll have two more of them on Monday. In the 29-yard line, first down Bears. Fuller. Screen, Matt Suey. Suey, good running, ran right under a Viking, and then really heads up play, stepping out of bounds when he got all he could get up near midfield, stopping the clock. 33 seconds remaining in the half. 20-yard pickup. 
That was just about the most imaginative uh, play that I've seen out of Chicago in the two games that I've watched them. One in the preseason and this one. That's so he's one heck of a football player. He's been as steady as could be for the Bears over the last six years. He's dependable, Matt Suey. He's, he's very smart. You see how he just ran out of bounds there to save the clock. He's, he's good at catching the football and blocking for Walter Payton as well. All around good football player. Former Penn Stater, Matt Suey, number 26. That's the time remaining in the half. Blitz is on. Fuller steps in the pocket, dumps it to Payton, and down goes Payton. Good reaction there defensively as Carl Lee, who already has one interception on the night, was watching Payton all the way. One thing about it, Peyton is always going to attract a crowd. And Fuller now uses the bear timeout. They have two remaining. And he'll move over to the sidelines. Be there with Mike Ditka. And no question if you join us late, Tim McMahon, the man they would like to have in there, the quarterback, is on the bench. Muscle spasm in the neck. Nerve spasm, rather, and muscle spasms in the back. Said he wanted to play. There were many of the Bears, including Gary Fensick, who we spoke with, said there's no way we'll keep him out of the lineup tonight. There he is on the right with the headband on. No question that, that he does also march to a different drummer than most folks. Well, when they came out to warm up, he led them onto the field. He came out running. I saw him throwing the football during the warm-up. Warm -ups, and I mean, he looked sharp. He looked ready to play. I was standing with Dick Buckus on the sideline, and Buckus mentioned that Dicka is trying to institute a, a rule around the camp that if you don't practice, don't expect to play. Well, that's not a bad rule. I like that rule, actually, especially for a quarterback and I guess any other position. The quarterback has to be sharp when he's out there. The only way a man's going to be sharp is by practicing. I think you get down late in the season. It's a different story. You get down to the last two or three games, you're in a playoff drive. But here early in the season, they put him in there tonight. They might lose him for two, three, four, five weeks. They keep him out tonight. They know they're going to have him back probably next week. Second down and nine. Bears trailing 10 to 3. Fuller under pressure. Tried to throw the ball in the direction of Suey and he may get called for grounding the ball this time although Suey was right in his line of sight I'm not so sure about that call <laughs> he did have Suey in the vicinity <laughs> didn't have to call this intentional grounding it's the third one tonight and it's a very rare call Most well quarterbacks can get away with it well if we're all being honest <laughs> we know it was intentionally grounding <laughs> but Suey was in the vicinity look for number 26 Top left of your screen. There's pressure from Elshire. No Suey. In any event, grounding the ball, loss of down. It'll be third down and 25. That's two intentional groundings tonight. That's unusual. At the 35-yard line. Peyton and Suey both in there. Four down linemen for the bikes. The fires. That's Emory Moorhead. No, he comes down out of bounds. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Well, we got a flag. I don't know if he went beyond the line of scrimmage before he threw the ball of a lineman at a release. He was very close to it. Flag is down right on the line of scrimmage. Again, our referee tonight, Dick Jorgensen. But Illegal I forward pass. Number four. Offense, five yards, loss of down, fourth down. Another loss of down, consecutive loss of down penalties, and the punting unit will come on with 14 seconds remaining in the half. The Vikings uh, have blocked one punt this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they go all out to block this one, because even if they do rough the punter, there's only 14 seconds left in the game. More on Buford is on. And Darren Nelson is deep. Don't leave us, it's just a half. Good kick by Buford. Darren Nelson just lets it go. And the seconds tick down to two. One. And on the scoreboard clock, the half is over. And the Vikings with a sellout hometown crowd lead the Bears. 10 to 6. We'll be back. We'll be talking live with Eric Dickerson of the Los Angeles Rams. Don't go away. The 
deep for the Bears. It is uh, Willie Gold and Dennis Gentry awaiting the kick of Jan Stenneru, who will get the second half underway. Minnesota leading the Bears 10 to 6. Both teams undefeated in tonight's play. The Bears, of course, 10 and 6 last year, the defending Central Division champion. Loses to the 49ers in the NFC title game. While well, the Vikings were 3 and 13. Here's Willie Gold. Great speed, and Willie Galt finds a little bit of a gap, and he takes it out to the 43-yard line, first and 10 Bears. All near the 43-yard line is Willie Galt, with the longest kickoff return professionally of his career, has given the Bears good field position, and a good, strong shot by Fuller. Gets the ball upfield, hitting Galt at about the 35-yard line. It'll be first down Bears, and they get a big one on the very first offensive play of the second half. They sure did, and the reason he was so open, he was one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back here. Minnesota ran a blitz, and gosh, he turned Willie Till around in a circle. And nothing dramatic in the first half on the part of either quarterback, except Tommy Kramer scrambling for his life, and he was effective. Steve Fuller was 10 of 13 in the first half, 95 yards, one interception. Tommy Kramer, 12 of 21, 142 yards. He, too, had an interception. The Bears have a first down. It's at the 37-yard line of the Vikings, and Fuller is back under pressure. Had a man open, it was McKinnon. That one bounced right off his knee, a pass that was thrown low, but could have been caught. And should have been caught. I thought it was a very nice move by Fuller to avoid the sack that time. Should have been a completed pass. Dennis McKinnon, who missed much of last year with an injury. Probably the best outside receiver, at least in terms of working underneath. Willie Gall, of course, has that great speed to the outside. But McKinnon out of Florida State, has a lot of good moves. Got himself a touchdown pass this past Sunday against New England. Fuller from the regular tee, hands off to Suey on second and ten. Matt Suey, good strong running. He'll have a first down. He's close to the 25-yard line, the former Penn Stater. Well, once again, we're seeing some imagination from this Chicago offense. Matt Suey lined up in a slot formation that would normally indicate he was going to go out for a pass and ran along the line of scrimmage and they made a nice little reverse handoff on it. There were nice a couple, play. couple of question marks coming in tonight for the Bears. Walter Payton bruised his ribs in the New England game this past Sunday. Had to leave the game in the fourth quarter. But he's been going all the way tonight. Jim McMahon was a question mark up until right before the game started. And nerve, a pinched nerve in the neck and muscle spasms in the back is Vince Jim McMahon, the quarterback. And we are watching Fuller go all the way this evening. Tries to get it to Peyton on first down. Well, he got it to Walter, but Walter was about five yards out of bounds even when he threw it to him. <laughs> first time we've seen Jim McMahon tonight with his helmet on. He's, I think, trying to get in the way of Mike Ditka every way he can. Say, hey, Coach, what do you think? Ditka, that is Mike Ditka, with his coat off, shouting out to... Something to his offensive unit. Mike Ditka coached for nine years under Tom Landers, the Dallas Cowboys, after his career ended there. Played six years with the Bears, all pro here three or four times with the Bears. A couple of years at Philadelphia, four years at Dallas. Came to the Bears as head coach in 1982. Second and ten. Fuller. Payton. Peyton is unable to get away from Willie Teal. He'll get a couple out of it. Good tackle by Willie Teal. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats, and we'll resolve those to the first half stats. Again, it has not been an offensive thriller, to say the least. Minnesota with a fine drive right at the end of the half, and a good pass from Tommy Kramer to Anthony Carter to put the Vikings in front for the first time, and they lead 10-6. We're in the third quarter. Frank Gifford along with Joe Namath and O.J. Simpson. They're down and long. Bears have been able to get deep on the Vikings. Twice they've had a first down and goal to go, but they have not been able to get it into the end zone. Fuller fires to Brad Anderson, and Anderson may have taken himself out of first down range. We'll see where they mark that ball. They'll mark it near the 18. That's short of the first down by a couple. Scott Studwell made the stop. Anderson should have thought first down instantly. Put his head down, bull to see if he could get it. 
Now they settle with the field goal unit. And what really stopped that play was Neil Oshire. He had an end tackle game on. He stunted around to the outside and came clean. Not an offensive blocker laid a hand on him. Kevin Butler is on. Butler has hit twice tonight from in close. One, a 24-yarder. And again from 20 yards out. This will be from 35. The rookie from Georgia. And now Butler has made three for three. And we have a one-point difference. Ten to nine, the Vikings are leading. We'll be back at the Metrodome in a moment. Buster Rhymes, a fourth-round draft pick out of Oklahoma, has settled in to await the kickoff of Kevin Butler. Bears now trailing the Vikes, 10 to nine. Opening moments of the third quarter here in Minneapolis. High kick by Butler. Rhymes from the two-yard line. And Rhymes out over the 30 on a good return. Minnesota will have good field position. First down and 10, the Vikings at the 33-yard line. Kramer again chased out of the pocket. He's been chased out of that pocket, ducking under Bears all night long. This time he tries to get it in complete to Steve Jordan, tried to get it into Jordan across the middle, and Hampton was all over Kramer. Take a look at him in isolation. He used to play out a defensive end until Richard Dent got so good, they moved him to the inside, and he is picked up on the inside just like he used to do it from the outside. Hampton and Dent both over on that same side. Big reason the Bears were able to get 72 sacks, a record a year ago. Dent had 17 and a half last year. Hampton had 11 and a half. On second and 10, Kramer with a little rollout, giving a little more protection. He gets the ball out to Malarkey, and Malarkey close to a first down right on the first down marker. Wilbur Marshall taking him out of bounds. Now that's the second time Wilbur Marshall didn't quite get to the outside far enough. Early in the first half, they had a completion downfield this time. It was a simple zone defense to the strong side, and it was Wilbur's responsibility to get to the outside there, and he just didn't quite get there. Well, in defense of Wilbur, he should have been there, but Minnesota's doing an excellent job of running these play action passes, and what that does is hold that linebacker for just a fraction to get those receivers open. Malarkey was beyond the first down marker, but the sticks were held on the opposite side of the field, so we'll get the measurement. And it's first down Minnesota, and you hear it from the crowd, a sellout crowd, 62,000, here at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis. Bears have defeated the Vikings three straight. They doubled on them last season, and the quarterback in one of those victories was the man we've been watching tonight, Steve Fuller. He had a big game, 34-3 victory over the Vikings, filling in for Jim McMahon last year as he's doing tonight. Minnesota, first and 10 from their 43-yard line, Darren Nelson. Sacked up over on the left side, Mike Hartenstein, the defensive end, closing down, Steve McMichael there, and Wilbur Marshall. Gain of a yard, it'll be second down and nine. I'll Curtis House is a big one. Curtis Rouse at 318, number 68 there. Curtis Boo Boo Rouse. Hey, I'm surprised with this Minnesota team. I wasn't sure that they were for real before this game, but I'm starting to, to believe that they're a good football team. Rouse, the lineman at the bottom of your screen, he has a broken left hand. He has it encased in a cast, and then that is padded. Kramer again, chased out of the pocket. That one almost picked off. Diving for it, almost collecting it was Leslie Frazier. It'll be third down and nine. Frazier already has one interception tonight, and last year they thought he was on his way to the Pro Bowl. He had five interceptions going into the 10th game of the year. He got hurt in that game. He didn't play much after that, but he's one of the fine cornerbacks in this game. There's Roush. As you can see, that club on his left hand. That's the course checked by the officials before the game. There's a cast under a lot of padding. Still looks rather lethal. It certainly cuts down on the holding capabilities. Third and nine from the shotgun, Tommy Kramer. This time Kramer had some time, looks downfield, and he finds Buster Rhymes, a rookie from Oklahoma. He comes down with a Minnesota first down near the 22-yard line. Gary Fincy was back there along with Mike Singletary. The Bears in their 46th defense, they play Singletary deep. 
See number 50? Watch him. He'll take a drop like a safety man. Yes, he will. And the reason being, Gary Fensick and Dave Durison both split the field, and they covered the outsides of the field, leaving the middle open. And that middle area is Singletary's coverage here. Very difficult for a middle linebacker to get back there that deep. What they count on is pressure on the quarterback. They count on Tommy Kramer not having the time to get that deep. And they depend on that. The defensive coordinator, Buddy Ryan, they didn't get it that time. Kramer was a little antsy in there, but his line held for him. He was able to get the completion. First down, Vikings, 21-yard line of the Bears. Vikings leading 10-9 here in the third quarter. Darren Nelson to the 20-yard line, and a flag comes late. Could be a holding call. Dan Hampton defensively there for the Bears. They're going to call... Curtis Rouse for a holding. Holding number 68, offense, still first off. We know he did it with the right hand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we saw Tillman, who played with Atlanta last year, he's with the Washington Redskins this year, play with a club on his hand last year, and he went the whole season with never having a penalty call against him. You see his left arm, the bad arm he's holding with. There's nothing more frustrating frustrating to a coach than get a holding penalty on a run play. You know, Curtis weighs 318 pounds without his uniform. I wonder what he weighs out there with all the equipment on. And pulling clear to the opposite side also. Down remains the same. It's first down and 20. Field position, 32-yard line of the Bears. Anderson is in motion. Kramer fires underneath. This is Alan Rice. And Rice gets some of it back to the original line of scrimmage. Where it'll be second down and ten. And Kramer complaining once again as he was in the first half. They're getting to him a little late. Either that or holding his receiver, but Tommy will get into a football game. He gets exercised. I think he felt he was clubbed after he threw the ball across the helmet. You know, they say so much about the Bears and their rough, tough style of play. Their defensive unit was the least penalized defensive unit in the NFL last year. So they play it rough, they play it tough but they play it relatively straight. 22-yard line, second down and 10. The option, and it goes to Anderson. Fincy put the hit on right at the line of scrimmage. Anderson bounces off and gets a yard, a yard and a half out of it. Down the line comes Kramer. And he's, he's free meat right there for Richard Dent. He's handling that ball as if he's running it. That's why I question that call. And Jim McMahon, I'm sure, is warming up strictly on his own. We were told that it came from Mike Ditka, that he was a, only in there if there was a catastrophe. <laughs> well, the Bears are trailing 10 to 9 with 7.50 in the clock moving here in the third quarter. That's not quite catastrophic. Three well, play. Play. Flags are down, free shot for Tommy Kramer. Incomplete. Busy referee tonight, Dick Jorgensen. Outside Bears, that's what we meant by the free play. Tommy Kramer, of course, read it. He knew he'd have a shot to put it up, as O.J. mentioned. Last week, I think it was. If you get that free shot, find the deepest man you got out there. Let's pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Richard Dent was offside for the Bears. That will bring up a third down and one for the Minnesota Vikings. Should be interesting here. The Vikings, that's why they had 11 first downs, and all those first downs came on throwing the ball. Frank Gifford along with O.J. Simpson and Joe Namath watching two Central Division rivals as we watch the number one draft pick coming in for the Bears. That's William Perry, the rookie from Clemson, nicknamed the Refrigerator. He is a big one. He's in on the short yardage and goal line defense. And the Vikings have a third down to one. Anderson stretches it to the outside. He'll get the first down. Mike Richardson carrying out of bounds. Good running on Anderson's part. Nothing doing inside. He took it outside for the first down. The reason that play worked, Otis Wilson, the linebacker who had outside support, got blocked. He got hung up and was blocked to the ground. Left the outside wide open. Very close game thus far. Hard hitting. 10 to 9. Minnesota leading Chicago. We understand the thunderstorms that they have predicted for the Minnesota 
specifically the Minneapolis area, have hit. Driving rainstorm outside. But we're in the Metrodome. Temperature nice, around 68. Kramer. First down. Trying to get into the corner of the end zone. Anthony Carter was over there. He had attracted the crowd. It's incomplete. Good play by Chicago on that play as we watch Kramer get pounded after he throws the ball away. They were expecting man-on-man -man coverage, and they were trying to run the same play that they scored on with Anthony Carter earlier, but the cornerbacks from Chicago dropped off. Hey, he had nothing to do but throw the ball away. Yeah, he's a gutsy guy, though, isn't he? Stands in there. He has been battered and beaten since he came into this league nine years ago. Missed half of last year, almost all of the year before that. Thoroughly beaten up, and that's one of the reasons. He's a competitor. He'll stand there and wait till the last moment to get rid of it. Second down goal to go. Kramer up again. Oh. Wide open. Touchdown, Mike Jones. He had a couple of key receptions for first downs in the first half, and this time Mike Jones, a third-year man from Tennessee State, gets it into the end zone and stretches out the Minnesota lead. Why was he so open here? Well, look at this replay, and we'll see. They're playing him loose. He splits the two linebackers Ooh, right here. Can't Singletary didn't yeah. get over to the strong side. You can't let him inside down there either. You're playing over his nose. You've got to make him go outside. Well, in fairness to Singletary, you never know who's supposed to be covering whom in this type of defense that Buddy Ryan has on defense. <laughs> <laughs> they better find out. <laughs> it's going to be a long season. Stenerud with the uprights. And we have a 17-9 game. The Vikings, they're 2-0. They beat San Francisco in the opener. They beat Tampa Bay. They lead the Bears. I think we now know what Ditka, how he measures the catastrophe. Jim McMahon is going to come into the game. We were told he would not be in unless something catastrophic happened. He has his helmet on. Steve Fuller has his helmet off. Maybe a catastrophe is measured by eight points down midway in the third quarter. <laughs> Deep for the Bears. Gentry is back there, 29. Willie Galt. Willie Galt has come close to popping two of them tonight. Keep in mind he has that world-class sprinter speed five times in Tennessee. He took a kickoff for a touchdown, one short of the NCAA record. Don Stenerud will put it up. Vikings leading 17-9. Willie Galt wants it. But he had to let Dennis Gentry take it. Don't step right in front of him. And Gentry goes to the 30-yard line. Out comes Jim McMahon. We told you, pinch nerve in his neck. He was in traction after the game on Sunday. Has not worked out this week. Ditka was pretty positive he would not play. He said he needed to practice if he was going to play. And his two wins over Tampa Bay and New England. Jim is 36-55, 65.5%, three touchdowns, a couple of interceptions. We told you earlier, missed seven games last year. All of the playoff games with a lacerated kidney. As Fuller started four of those last six games of the season. But here he is, Jim McMahon, great All-American from Brigham Young University, has taken over for the Bears. Pressure on the first oh. play and right open. I love it. Does Willie Galt forget it? If he gets behind you, it's over. And McMahon paid the price, but he got the touchdown. 70-yard touchdown. He really got <laughs> hammered just as he released the ball. And yes, that's Johnson was coming on the blitz. I don't know whether he was the man that got him, but what a great shot hitting Willie Galt right in stride. Well, Walter Payton made it happen because he picked up that middle linebacker who, who timed his blitz perfectly. Watch 55, watch 52. Walter Payton picked him up. The blitz was perfect and a beautiful pass by McMahon to one of the fastest humans. Living. <laughs> McMahon never saw the completion. He was buried right after he delivered the ball to Willie Gull. So lightning has struck. It's the first play of more than 30 yards that the Vikings have given up this year. That was 70 yards. Butler for the conversion. This game is back to within one point. Well, the Vikings tried to fool Jim there. They knew it was his first play of the game. He was excited. They figured they'd come with the all-out blitz and fool him, but Jim read it perfectly. And I have to reiterate what O.J. said. That was absolutely great play by Walter Payton picking up that blitz. 
And there is Willie Gall with the great speed. He was wide open, but it was such a well-thrown ball. Buster Rhymes is back for the Vikings. Kevin Butler will put it in play. 17-16. Minnesota still leading and a beautiful kick by Butler. And the Minnesota Vikings will have it at the 20-yard line. Here's Joe. Everything went just right for the Bears on that play. It was pretty good defensive philosophy. A quarterback comes in the game. He's cold. He's a little bit nervous, so let's put the pressure on him. Well, it didn't work that time, obviously. Jim McMahon's too smart for it, along with Walter Payton. Walter Payton did a terrific job picking up Dennis Johnson right there. And Willie Galt in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Well, we all know by now he's very difficult to keep up with. What a pass by Jim McMahon. Great Great play, all-around offensive play, fine play. McMahon held it to, until he saw Galt clear. He never saw the completion. 70-yard touchdown to Willie Galt. Great effort made possible by an all-around football player, Walter Payton. First and ten, the Vikings leading by one. Kramer, and that ball almost picked off. Mike Richardson had a good shot at it. It's incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. Play like that, I think, has a tendency to even fire up the Bears' defense as well. You know, they have the leader back in there. Talking to uh, McKinnon today in the, in the meeting, he said Jim McMahon just fires up the team when he's in there. He's a heck of a leader, a heck of a competitor, and it looks like he's picked up the defense as well. Willie Gall now having his finest game of his pro career. Five receptions on the night, 132 yards, the 170-yard touchdown. Seven minutes remaining in the third quarter in that kind of a football game. That's the first big play we've had, but it has been, I promise you, a hard-hitting game. Good defensive play on the part of both clubs. Kramer spinning out of trouble again. And this time, fires it up there, gets it to Leo Lewis, who makes a super catch. That is one of the most difficult catches in football, pulling it off your shoestrings. Uh -huh. Richard Dent again pressuring Tommy Kramer out of the pocket. First and if down I was Minnesota. If I was Richard Dent, I'd go straight to the official. I don't know how they missed that holding penalty. He's talking to the official now. He beat his man at the line of scrimmage. Kramer was dead meat, and he was grabbed. His jersey was grabbed from behind. First down, 30-yard line. Kramer looking it over. He wanted to go outside to Leo Lewis. He had to finally check it off to Allen Rice. And uh, that's incomplete. Minnesota, they have to throw the ball deep now, Joe. These guys are just sitting on those short passes now, and they're just taking shots at the ball when it's released. Well, that last time, Richard Denton, Dan Hampton got their hands up, and that prevented Kramer from throwing it early. But with one-on-one -on -one coverage, uh, I'd like to see him go deep, too. Last time Tommy Kramer played against these Bears, he really blew him away, 35-70 to 70 at five touchdown passes, over 340 yards. That was back in 82. He hasn't played against the Bears since then because of injuries. Kramer looking over second down and 10. This time, nowhere to go. And down goes Kramer inside the 25 at the 24. A loss of six yards. It'll be third and extremely long yardage. And third down and 16. And I promise you, those four down linemen, Dent, Hampton, McMichael, and Hartenstein will just let it fly. Kramer, the protection is picked off, however. This is Wilbur Marshall. And Marshall brings it back to the 25-yard line. That time, Kramer had a lot of time. A poorly thrown ball is picked off. I think that's the first time tonight that Minnesota didn't show the patience that they need. They still have a one-point lead, and I think they should have been a little more patient, try to get a little of it back, punt the ball, and hope that their defense can do the job. They've been doing it all night. Wilbur Marshall did an excellent job of reading it and does it. Fine job of running with the ball after he caught it. His first career interception, and it gives the Bears the ball inside the 26-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. 5-33 remaining in the third quarter. Minnesota leading Chicago 17-16. McMahon firing McKinnon. Touchdown. McMahon has thrown two footballs tonight. Two touchdowns, a 25-yarder there to McKinnon. Earlier, a few moments ago, if you were not with us, a 70-yarder to Willie Gulp. This is hard to believe. Does he make things happen, positive things for this offense? 
and that's a difficult ball to throw, as you well know, Joe. Sliding out to the left, throwing it back across the field. You hang it up there. Speed can get to the interception defensively. But that ball hung up there like that, but that was perfectly timed. Kevin Butler for the conversion. And the Bears have retaken the lead. Quite a football game. And this man has put some electricity into it. Jim McMahon. Colorful, fun, and rather skillful. Two passes, two touchdowns. The man blinked. Finally. <laughs> he is intense. He I is think also he was very special. Saying hello to his lovely wife, Nancy. I know she's sitting at home and on the edge of her seat and certainly concerned because of the injury. Kevin Butler bangs it. Buster Rhymes is deep. And takes it at the five. A little indecision back there. But Buster Rhymes gets it out over the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Let's take a look at McKinnon now, Joe, in isolation. Yes, again, this is a fairly dangerous pass for some people to be throwing, but Jim, with the velocity he can throw the football, knows he can get it to him, and McKinnon just simply outruns Browner. It was an inside-outside coverage by Browner and Vest, but neither one of them kept up with him. I don't know how he got that much on it. Falling away to his left, he rolled to his left. He's right-handed, of course. He still was able to get the velocity on it. <laughs> he stirred the Metrodome up. <laughs> the catastrophe quarterback. Two completions, two touchdowns. Vikings now trailing 23-17. Ball at their own 22-yard line. Kramer gets it to Anderson. And Anderson is met at the 25-yard line. A gain of about three. It'll bring up second and seven. Dave Durison was there defensively for the Bears. Second down and seven. Kramer. Dancing around, but he finds Anderson, and Anderson slips, but he gets the first down over the 35-yard line. A good move by Anderson, finding the dead spot in there, and they have to give the offensive line of the Minnesota Vikings credit. Tommy had a lot of time back there to find the receiver. Brad Grant, having returned this year, now in his 18th season, four Super Bowls, all of them lost by the Minnesota Vikings, the most recent in 76 against the Oakland Raiders. 11 times in 17 years, Bud Grant won this Central Division. Last year, of course, the Bears won it for the very first time with a 10-6 record. First and 10, the Vikings near their 37-yard line. Kramer now, 19 of 34, 230 yards, a couple of touchdowns, two interceptions as we watch Darren Nelson find a big opening on the right side. Out to the 44-yard line, gain of seven. This is one of the reasons Minnesota should have showed a little more patience on that third and long before. I think that was the first time they panicked somewhat. They've been moving the ball very successfully here in the second half, doing just what they're doing now. A you few know, runs and short passes. The third down and 16 situation that they had on the interceptions, mighty tough to go downfield with those linebackers that deep. One of the few bad passes Kramer has thrown tonight, but it resulted instantly in a bear touchdown. Anderson gets away from McMichael, but not Dan Hampton. <laughs> Third down and five. The Minnesota Vikings at their own 43-yard line. 224 remaining in the third quarter. Tommy Kramer from the shotgun, but the whistle stopped the play. Yeah, one of those linemen pulled his hand up. False start, number 71, offense. Still third down. Things are getting a little shaky for the Vikings here in the third quarter. The pass that Tommy Kramer had picked off and one that he should not have thrown. And now movement on the line. Toronto, of course, leads the Yankees in the American League by five going into today. The Yankees getting drubbed once again by Detroit. Kansas City leads California by one game in their battle. That's going into the day. There you see part-time action in baseball in the American League. Third down and ten now for the Vikes. Kramer going in the general direction of Buster Rhymes downfield. Crowd is getting a little antsy with Tommy. He's heard it before. Greg Coleman comes out now. A putter for Minnesota and Dennis McKinnon drops back for the Bears.
understand that Gary Greg Coleman's cousin, brother Vince, stole his 100th base. His cousin, brother, stole his 100th base tonight for the Cardinals. Coleman picks it up, drills it low, the kind you can run back. Good coverage by the bikes. They hold McKinnon short at the 32-yard line, where it'll be first and 10. 41-yard punt, eight-yard return, but the flag is down. Line. Procedure against the Vikings, but I think the Bears would like that. They have good field position. I think the Bears perhaps turn this down. And they do indeed decline the penalty, so the Bears will have a first and ten, the ball at the 32-yard line. Quick count by McMahon. He wants another one. He's got him. Got a man deep. And bobbling the ball is Willie Gall. Oh, my goodness. That would have been three for three. <laughs> and McMahon is saying, come on, I put it there. You catch it. Oh, and did he put it there? These are the passes Willie normally do, do an excellent job on. He has them. The ball, he's kind of fading back and outside a little bit, so it wasn't as simple a catch as it may have uh, appeared. Pretty difficult catch, but I think he should have caught it. Yeah, we'd call that a mild underthrow, actually, but Willie be the first one to tell you he could have had it. It would have been a darn good catch. Well, not the only way he could have caught it would be to turn completely around. He's trying to catch it, keep some stride, and get into the end zone. Second down and 10. Again, quick count by McMahon. Complete to Marjoram. And Marjoram, former Stanford All-American, has first down yardage out over the 45-yard line. <laughs> they have Willie Till, number 37, a little shell-shocked over there. <laughs> he is giving about as much. I guess he didn't get the numbers right. Marjoram certainly isn't nearly as fast as Willie Galt, and he gave him just about as much cushion as he would have given Willie. Marjoram coming back from bad knee surgery a year ago. Missed all of last year. Full reconstruction job of the knee, and he is playing well. That's his fifth reception. We're here now in the third game of the season. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. McKinnon in motion. Movement and contact before the ball was snapped. Bikes had some kind of a deal on. They got Fault into it start, early. Number 57, offense, still first stop. Ball goes to Chris, Chris Martin. But in the interior line, the contact was made. Tom Thayer is working at right guard for Kurt Becker, who was a questionable starter tonight because of the bruised back and tailbone. You know, it appears to me that the Bears certainly aren't going to set on this lead with Tommy Crater and the Kramer on this Minnesota punch uh, on the other side. They know they need to get some more points. They're going full throttle offensively. McMahon has been going on quick counts. Now he goes long count. Man, that ball incomplete. Willie Galt does not hold on. Short of the first down. It'll be second down and 15. Once again, if you weren't with us earlier, we were told Jim McMahon would not play. He was a catastrophe quarterback. If Fuller went down, we presume Tom Zach went down. Fuller struggled through the first half early in the third quarter. They brought Jim McMahon on. He instantly, on the first play, hit Willie Galt for a 70-yard touchdown. They got the ball back a few moments later on an interception. He went right to the air again on his second pass of the game. He hit Dennis McKinnon from 25 yards out. The Bears in the lead, 23-17. McMahon stays on, looks down, and out over the Minnesota defense. Second down, 15. That's Willie Galt. Galt, close to a first down. I think he has it. Isaac Holt giving Galt a lot of room, yeah. way too much room. I was going to say to Joe, that was a record cushion on a receiver. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Isaac Holt must have been 15 yards away from Willie Galt. I think we're going to have a measurement. Galt had his eye right on that first down marker. I say when you're dealing with a guy who probably would have been a sprinter or perhaps even a hurdler in the 84 Olympics had he not signed a Paris contract, well, you're going to give him a little bit of room. And I believe they 
grown to, to respect a great deal Jim McMahon's arm as well. They figure this guy's liable to do anything or try anything out there, so they want to give plenty of room. Go well, that much short to the first down. Well, now six receptions, 148 yards, one touchdown. Best of his professional career, which began as a number one draft pick in 1983. Well, Jim McMahon. I suspect he'll go with a long count here. He's been going on short counts. He would like to draw the bikes offside. I'm quite sure of that. Walter Payton is a setback. And McMahon, pinched nerve in the neck at all, gets the first down on the sneak over the left side. Let's see little man, isn't he? In traction after the game this past Sunday, in which the Bears beat New England 20-7. to Spent a couple days in the hospital. Joe, you were down visiting with him. He had a big horse collar around his neck. He looked like he was really in agony, didn't he? <laughs> when I first saw him over at the Bears trading camp, he was holding court with about 20 newsmen. And he had this huge harness around his neck. Afterwards, when he and I started talking, he said, Joe, I was just pulling their leg. I just put this on for fun. <laughs> well, he almost pulled Dipka's leg too long because Dipka wasn't going to play him tonight because he had not worked out. A first down. This is McMahon again. Right open field in front of him. He wants a bundle. Got McKinnon. That is McKinnon. Third touchdown pass tonight for McMahon. McKinnon second. A 43-yard effort, and he is blowing this game away. He makes things happen. <laughs> Great effort by McKinnon. He never gave up on McMahon. He kept full stride, gave him a good angle. Let's watch him. He's looking back. He knows what's going on. McMahon will be chased out of the pocket right here. There he is. He takes a look. Now he knows what McMahon can do. He tries to give him a plane in which to hit him. And he's right there. It's hard to blame a defensive back when a receiver can run that far and still catch a pass. It's a lot of protection. Uh, McMahon did an excellent job of scrambling back there and buying time. Butler for the conversion. McMahon, not bad numbers. Five of seven, 166 yards and three touchdowns. And McKinnon is having another big day. Had a touchdown, two touchdown passes coming into the game. He has a couple tonight. But McMahon has been outrageous. 43-yard touchdown. He had a 25-yard touchdown. McMahon hit Willie Golf with a 70-yard touchdown. Well, there's an old saying that if you can back it up, it ain't bragging. And McKinnon was in the paper all week this week with statements that there was no way the Vikings could beat them, that they were a better team and it would be no game if these guys played their ball game. And I gather this is Chicago's ball game. I've never seen him play quite like this. But that was a tremendous pass. Tremendous pass. McMahon running to his left and throwing the ball 50 yards. He's got some kind of arm. He has really turned the electricity on here. And there, of course, is the man who started the game tonight. He wasn't all that bad. He just wasn't getting it done. He had the Bears right within reach. They were one point down when McMahon came into the game and set off the fireworks. And they have been incredible fireworks. Fuller was 14 of 18, 124 yards, had the one interception. Butler hits it. It's deep, and this will be Rhymes who bobbles it in the end zone. It'll be touchback. Chicago Bears defense. They really don't need all that much of a pump up, but it just seems to permeate through the entire team when something like that happens. Somebody comes off the bench, as McMahon has done. Three quick touchdown passes. All of a sudden, you were down by one when he came in. Now you lead in a few, just a few minutes, 30 to 17. On first down, Kramer is back. Kramer is down. Sacked by McMichael. Back close to the 10 yard line. Take a look at that scoring drive, which was a McMahon 43-yard shot to Dennis McKinnon. Well, we mentioned that Minnesota was proud of the fact that the closer they got their backs to the goal line, the better they got. Well, McMahon has found a remedy to that. <laughs> <laughs> that score from midfield. Yeah, indeed he has. Third down and 19. 
following the sack. Second down, rather. Kramer. Ted Brown. And Brown back to the original line of scrimmage, taken out of bounds there by Dave Dorison. And that's the end of the third quarter. We'll be back after this message and a word from our stations. I was going to ask Joe if he ever had back-to-back -back touchdown passes. He said, I don't remember. Don't stop me. And I said, well, I'll ask OJ. We can't stop him. I, I can tell you, against Baltimore, Joe Ferguson, two passes, receptions on my part. <laughs> we lost the game. Jim Very McMahon jump. has really fired this house up. I'd rather he has quieted this house down. Partisan Minnesota Viking fans, of course. But he wanted to get in <laughs> all night long. We'd been told he was not going to play. And he really turned the lights on when he came in. Five of seven, 166 yards. Three touchdowns, and they were back-to-back -back his first two passes here in the third quarter. Now, we begin the fourth quarter with the Vikings near their 21-yard line, third down and nine. Tommy Kramer from the shotgun. Oh, yeah, good shot. Getting it upfield. Leo Lewis, first down Vikings, and again, Kramer paid the price. He was hammered as he released the football. Big Richard Dent. But he had to hold it that long for Leo Lewis to uncover, get himself open, and he paid the price. There's Dick Butkus, of course, for so many years, the great linebacker with these Chicago Bears. He's the best that I've ever seen. I don't think any player has ever played his position with more aggressiveness and intelligence than Dick Butkus. On first down, Kramer back again. Trying to get it to Lewis one more time. I noticed the topic of the conversation as Joe was visiting with Dick Butkus had to do with those knees. <laughs> yeah, Dick's having a lot of trouble with his knees right now. And speaking of knees, that's Anderson, second year man out of Baylor, with a lot of Baylor running backs around. We watch Pollard and Abercrombie on Monday night. Both starting backs for the Pittsburgh Steelers everywhere you look. Baylor running backs. Second down and ten, Vikings. That's Ted Brown, number 23 in motion. Oh, and trying to get the ball to Darren Nelson, I believe. Kramer, I think, feels that he was crossed up on the pattern run by Nelson. Put it right between Ted Brown and Darren Nelson. And it leaves Tommy in the unenviable spot of facing a Chicago defense at third and ten. Minnesota still leading in total yards. But they can't take away the 70-yard shot to Willie Galt, the 43-yard shot to McKinnon, or the 25-yard touchdown pass to McKinnon. Now, Chicago, through the third quarter, they have the lead. Third and long. Kramer, wide open, deep downfield. It was the rookie from Oklahoma, Buster Rhymes. Two big passes caught by this fourth round draft pick and Kramer was right on target with it. Boy, you don't relax when Tommy Kramer's in the game and the Bears very well know that. It's a zone defense here and he simply found a hole deep in the secondary. Nice going Buster. Nice a, job of adjusting to the ball. A great was. career as a receiver at Oklahoma. 51 receptions, 13 as a senior, 19 yard average. Yeah, he played that zone perfectly. Yeah, you know, Buster was a running back there at Oklahoma for a while until a guy named Marcus Dupree showed up. Now, what happened to Marcus? <laughs> Speaking of knees, first and ten, the Vikings. They trail 30-17. Cuts down on a conversion, and they'll be six down. Kramer showing a lot of presence, but overthrows Ted Brown. Kramer under tremendous pressure. Otis Wilson had come on the blitz. The Bears defense... This never lets up on you. Pressure, pressure, pressure. That was a brilliant adjustment by Tommy, just a slight overthrow. You know, OJ, you did mention Marcus Dupree. He had an awful knee injury this past year, and there's concern that he may never be able to play again. William Perry is in there. They call him the refrigerator, the number one draft pick, a 325-pounder out of Clemson. There he is. What did the outspoken buddy Ryan say? A draft day, we just wasted a draft pick. Well, I don't think they think that anymore. They get a lot out of William Perry. Second and ten. Kramer has one batted away. 
Going up high, knocking it away was Richard Dent. It'll be third down and ten. And there is Richard Dent. 17 and a half sacks last year. Pro Bowl was an eighth-round draft pick in 83. And 1983, Dan Hampton, who played defensive right in, was injured for a while. Richard Dent came in and played so well. When Dan came back, they moved him inside to defensive tackle. I want to see Williams, 72 on Rouse, 68. Both of them weigh 318 pounds. <laughs> Two refrigerators. <laughs> Third and ten. For Sean Kramer. He gets it away. Oh. And that pass was for first down yardage. Leo Lewis didn't handle it. And that would have kept the drive alive. It's fourth down. And the field goal unit comes on. Jan Stenerud. This is one that Leo Lewis will think about late tonight. Good working against Mike Richardson. Bounces off him right there. Well, Mike did a good job. He got that left hand in there, and I think he got it on the ball. Stenerud with the putter Greg Coleman holding a 47-yard attempt. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh, and a bad snap to Coleman. Punt it. Oh. And we've heard so many complaints about the carpet here at the Metrodome. You saw Coleman slip that time. It is slippery. But that's the second miss snap on Coleman's side. That ball didn't appear to be a bad snap. We saw him early in the game drop a, a snap for a punt. Go find the stick him. Oh, that's illegal, huh? So the Bears will have great field position. We'll look once again. Oh, it's a high snap. Huffman is the snapper. David Huffman high over the outstretched hands of Greg Coleman and the Bears get the turnover there at the 44 yard line and the miracle man comes back out onto the field Jim McMahon of course has already fired three touchdown passes Walter Payton and Payton each yard adds to his NFL record. Official score credits as he can Huffman with that fumble, not Greg Coleman. I look for the Bears. I look for the Bears now to uh, run the clock a little bit more. They have a pretty good lead, 13 points. I think they'll try and use up some time. They got the man to do it against the defense that last year was 27th in the league against the rush, and there are only 28 teams. Peyton on the night, 50 yards on 12 attempts. He's been quiet since the first quarter. He's playing tonight with some very sore ribs. They may use him now. They work Matt Suey for the first down. He's down close to the 30-yard line. <laughs> you know, of course, some people would wonder, as much success as Jim has had passing the football, why change things now? It is only a 13-point lead, and you figure two touchdowns, you're behind. So Jim McMahon loves to throw the football, and the only way... Uh, He'll get away from throwing the ball as if uh, his coaches say, Jim, now we want to run the ball. We want to run the clock. You know, there's a great relationship between Ditka and Jim McMahon. Ditka was this kind of a football player himself. He's a character. He's tough. He'd fight you. He'd do anything to win. That's exactly what McMahon is. And Ditka tried to be a head coach with a little discipline. I think, well, it's sort of a love-hate relationship, really. McMahon puts it in the air and fires a Beautiful shot. Beautiful snap. Catch by Mc McKinnon with another great catch. I'll tell you, that's a tough one to catch. That is much more difficult than that dramatic leaping catch. When you have to go down, scoop it off your shoes, it makes a very difficult reception. And McKinnon came up with it for a bare first down at the 13-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. The Mets have won. Cards have lost. The Mets are one out. That race could go right down to the wire. Jim McMahon putting on a show here at the Metrodome. There was movement on both sides of the line there. False start, number 62, offense, still first down. First down and 15. Ball near the Vikings 18-yard line. McMahon looks into the end zone and tries to get it to Margarine. 
Marjorie working against Joey Browner and Joey Browner was right with Marjorie all the way. Second down 15. Again movement. And there was contact made up at the top of your screen. Elshire stepped across the line of scrimmage and I think he made the contact. Encroachment number 73, defense. Well, that will equal it out. So we're back to the original line of scrimmage are the Chicago Bears. Inside the 13-yard line, second down and 10. 10-32 remaining in the game. Both teams trying to stretch their 1985 season start to 3-0. McKinnon in motion. Again, there was movement, and flags are down. Contact made before that ball was snapped. Game getting just a little sloppy. But it has been a hard-hitting affair. False start, right tackle, offense, still second down. Second down, 15, quick count by McCann. And overthrows Dennis McKinnon. It'll be third down, 15. Speaking of that game, there's one question I wanted to ask Dickerson is, when I was holding out, that was the first year Walter Payton sort of came on his own. He was leading the league in rushing most of the year, and I was a defending champ. And the one thing I did every Monday, I picked up the paper to see where Walter was because I wanted to catch him. Did you, you catch him? Oh, I caught him in the last game of the season. Walter got hurt, and I was able to catch him. I couldn't believe that. I did that game, O.J., and I remember 1976. You came in on Sunday. We were there on Monday, and uh, they stuck you in there, and they worked you. Well, he won't have to read the paper. You'll see Kurt Water across the, the field from him. Of course, James Wilder has 279 yards. Third and 15, ball patted away. Going up there to get it was Doug Martin. It'll bring up fourth down, and we'll see the place kicker. That, of course, means the rookie, Kevin Butler, fourth-round draft pick out of Georgia. And it's the first time McMahon has not got it into the end zone. Fuller is the holder. Jay Hilgenberg, the snapper. Thirty-three yard attempt. Thirty-five yard attempt, rather. Kevin Butler. No, he hooks it to the left. And the Vikings will get it back. Down 30-17 with 10-18 remaining. I tell you, the man is a competitor. He loves to win. He wanted the three, didn't he? We'll be back. Vikings still in it. Touchdown and a conversion. They have a six-point game. But the Bears certainly have taken away the momentum from the Vikings. Tommy Kramer having a rough night, but he stays in there. This one's for Steve Jordan. And Jordan down the sidelines, stays in bounds, and gets out of the 40 to the 42 for a Viking first down. A 22-yard pickup. Well, Chicago comes with the bridge and or the blitz that time, excuse me. And Fensick has to cover Jordan all the way to the outside. Fensick just can't get out there. Jordan ran a simple out pattern, and uh, again, Fensick just couldn't get to him. First down is marked at the 43-yard line. Both teams undefeated. Vikings 2-0. They beat the 49ers in the opening game. They beat Tampa Bay last Sunday, 31-16. The Bears beat Tampa Bay, and they beat New England this past Sunday. Vikings 3-13 a year ago. The Bears 10-6. Kramer trying to squeeze it into Jordan. He was well covered and complete. Singletary and Wilson that had Jordan squished in between them. Bud Grant, always calm, as they say, keeps the game in perspective. He is rather cool about it. He got fined a one Super Bowl or one foot was it the Super Bowl? He was late showing up, got caught in a traffic jam. <laughs> he they arrived get, at the stadium seven minutes before the game. He doesn't get flustered, that's for sure. Carrying now 23 of 45, 310 yards, but his team is trailing. He's thrown two interceptions, has two touchdowns. Second down and 10. Kramer, what's the big one? He's got him. Carter, Anthony Carter. 
And how easy it is when you have skill at either end. Kramer laid that up perfectly. Anthony Carter took it in. 57-yard touchdown. The hometown loves it. You can well understand why they were willing to give a second round draft pick and a top linebacker in sin line to the Dolphins for the rights to this man. Oakland waved him a couple of weeks ago of the USFL. This is his second touchdown of the night. A beautifully thrown ball, Joe, and he took it in stride. Anthony it, Carter. It was on the money, and if anyone ever had any questions about Anthony Carter's speed, I think they just found out the man can run. I know he isn't. He just looks so fragile out there. 5'11", 162 pounds, and Skinnerud with flags all over the field, puts it through the uprights. 30, Mikey. Holding, and Skinnerud will have to do it again. And this is a very important conversion. Here's Anthony Carter. I mentioned three years, starting out with Michigan, then Michigan, of course, becoming Oakland Number this past season. Offense, one more try. This past season, 70 receptions for Anthony Carter, over 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, and he just moved right into the NFL season at the conclusion of the USFL year. That was Malarkey, by the way, of the Vikings, who was called on that penalty. So Stenerud will have to put it in from 30 yards out. This conversion, if good, will mean we have a six-point game. That snap, but Greg Coleman got it up, and Stenerud gets it through. 30-24, we'll be back. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Good football game underway, 9-19 remaining, and it is 30-24. The Bears over the Vikings, but the Vikings have struck back. Touchdown pass for Tommy Kramer, 57 yards to Anthony Carter, and we have a six-point ball game. Both teams coming into the game, 2-0. They'd like to leave tonight 3-0, undefeated in the Central Division of the NFC. Deep, number 29 is Dennis Gentry, number 83, the speedster Willie Galt is back there. The Bears would like to see Galt handle the football. John Stenerud knows that. He'll try to get it in the hands of Dennis Gentry. Galt comes over across the field and steps in front of it. Good special teams work. Galt taken out of bounds by Jay Carroll at the 20-yard line. A seesaw game back and forth. It was played close to the best throughout the first half. And then this man came in in the third quarter, not expected to play. Pinched nerve in the neck, back spasm throughout the week. Traction in the hospital after the game this past Sunday against New England. Mike Ditka said he would not play unless there was a catastrophe. Well, there was an eight-point difference. The Bears down by eight points early in the third quarter. They put him in. Two consecutive passes went for touchdowns. A 70-yarder, first of all, to Willie Galt, and then a 25-yard pass to McKinnon. And the crowd is stirred up here in the Metrodome. Well, I haven't seen this happen following a touchback. <laughs> the crowd making so much noise, the Bears can't get the play underway at their own 20-yard line. We may have a little anticipation by the crowd because the Minnesota fans have become accustomed over the years to this Viking team coming back when it seems as if they're out of the game and pulling it out for victory. Tommy Kramer, he's had a big night. And like McMahon, he perhaps is not the character that McMahon is, but I can tell you one thing, Tommy Kramer plays this game 100% to win. He's a tough dude, he's paid the price over the years, over his nine-year career with a lot of injuries. Here's McMahon. They won't get him up to the line of scrimmage <laughs> until he wants to go. <laughs> He's like a Broadway actor. He's loving this. I'm running the show. First down. McMahon oh, and the no. receiver wide open. It's McKinnon. <laughs> 
McKinnon having a brilliant night, as is McMahon. 45-yard reception by the free agent out of Florida State three years ago. That's Rufus Best well, turning him over to his own man who never got there. Well, if you're going to play a guy tight in a zone, you should bump him. I think Rufus should have bumped him. It would have given Joey Browner a little more time to get into his area. First down, the Bears. Inside the 35-yard line. Clock ticking away inside eight minutes and 40 seconds. Peyton. And Peyton up close to another bear first down. Chris Martin made the stop. We'll pause five seconds and allow our friends along the line to identify themselves. The Metrodome, 186 feet high to the floor below. And it's seen a lot of action tonight. Two Central Division opponents, Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. It's been a seesaw battle, a tough, hard-hitting game. And it was blown wide open by Jim McMahon when he came in in the third quarter and on consecutive passes, hit for two touchdowns. Came back moments later and hit a third. He's 7 of 12, 230 yards. And he's played a little more than a quarter of the game. Gentry is in for Walter Payton. That time McMahon goes down. Uh, hustling Scott Studwell was there, along with Neil Elshire. Well, that definitely was... Uh a cross up or a foul up on McMahon's part or one of the two running backs to play uh, looked like it was supposed to go to the left and someone missed the handoff. McMahon looks over. He gets the plays called into him, nods his head in agreement. Steps in the huddle and does precisely what he wants to do. Uh, there was a loss of a couple of yards. His third and a long two for the first. Chicago obviously having a tough time on third and short yardage. McMahon looks over the defense. He probably saw something that was not anticipated other than blow a possible first down here. He takes timeout. And we do too. We'll be back. <laughs> Looking forward to watching Eric Dickerson up in Seattle in his 1985 debut. Quick count by McMahon. On third and three gets it to Marjoram. Marjoram has the first down for the Bears at the 21-yard line. Rufus Best, the defender. But man likes that quick count. Now, that was a good read, too, that time. He went over there, was one-on-one -on -one coverage with coverage with Best, and just enough yardage to pick up that first down. You know what that quick count does, and the Vikings like to do it perhaps more than many teams in the NFL. They like to deal with those defensive down linemen, and they've been playing four of most of the night. And when you go on a quick count and you get an outside-inside deal, in other words, Doug Martin maybe going around Newton in the middle on the pass rush, well, that will give McMahon a lot of extra time. He's been going with it many times tonight. Oh. Peyton bobbles the ball and holds on to it. And he'll lose a yard. Flag is down. 6.55 remaining in the game. Very Busy Dick Jorgensen tonight and was holding as a preliminary indication working against the Bears. Here's Dick Jorgensen as Mike Ditka talks it over with Willie Galt. Number 62, offense, still first stop. Mark Ports over on the left side, the left guard. Play comes in, sent in by Mike Ditka. Bears a week from Sunday will meet the Washington Redskins. A soldier field in Chicago. We're going to watch the Bears twice more on our schedule. We'll see them October 21st in Green Bay. And we'll see them December the 2nd in Miami. The Vikings a week from Sunday will be at Buffalo as Jim McMahon is back. First and long yardage. Ooh, and Willie Galt got turned around. That ball was almost caught for him on his wrong side, I do believe. Yeah, I don't think Galt really saw the pass. I, I don't think he was ever able to pick up the ball, the flight of the ball. The ball is thrown right about here. It's in the air. Galt with that great speed. Looks back. He, he looked back. He just lost it somewhere. Yes. 
It was a catchable pass. Second down and 20. Could have been coming right out of the lights. Man. I'll tell you, he is really stoked up. He tried to force that one in. Carl Lee was the defender back there. I'll tell you, when you're having the kind of a night or day that a man has, you feel like a magician out there, don't you, Joe? Oh, sure. You feel like you can get anything in there. That time, I believe Carl Lee, uh, he's covering Brad Anderson. And he just simply had no respect for the deep pattern that time. I don't know whether he's, I guess he's not afraid of uh, Anderson's speed, but he was certainly tight on him. I would think they would be thinking, Mike Ditka should be thinking, get it in a little closer. We've got a third and 20, but let's get 10 more and give our field goal kicker a better opportunity. They're only six ahead. They'd like to stretch it. He's got a lot of The man is thinking the same thing. He's picking first down. He is looking for first down. He doesn't get it, but he gets inside the 15 to about the 13. It's going to make things far easier for the field goal kicker, Kevin Butler. And here he comes. Butler missed the last one from 35 yards out. A rookie from Georgia. Set an NCAA record for most attempts. 98 while he was at Georgia. Also set a record for field goals made at 77. Fine kicker. This will be an attempt with 31 yards. Fuller is the holder. Hilgenberg on the snap. And this time, the rookie from Georgia puts it through the uprights. Four field goals tonight for Kevin Butler. And the one missed from 35 yards out. And now, the Bears can breathe a little more easily. 5.35 remaining, and they now have a nine-point lead. That bad snap by Huff on that field goal attempt by Minnesota is beginning to loom bigger and bigger. Mike Ditka gets them together on the sidelines. That's the special teams. The kickoff unit. Telling him Butler who he wants him to kick it to. Meanwhile, the game of football chess being played out on the other side. Bud Grant huddled up with his special teams unit. Bud Grant, in 17 years with the Vikings, he took over in 1967. 11 Central Division titles, the four Super Bowls in which he never was a victor. Retired after 83. Ostensibly to get a little more out of life. Loves to hunt, loves to fish, loves the outdoors life. Was away for a year. The Vikings fell to 3-13. and 13. Max Winter, the president of the Vikings, went to him and asked him to come back. He wouldn't do it until Les Steckel was fired. And on the third time, they asked him. He said he would do it. I talked with Max before the game. I asked him about the contract. He said, there is open end. The reports are in the neighborhood of 500000 a year. Open end, meaning lifetime, really, for Bud Grant. Lester Rimes is back. Well, Frank, those are very impressive statistics considering he blew a first kickoff. Sure is. A rookie from Oklahoma. Oh, Buster Rhymes. Oh, another good return. Great effort on the part of Buster Rhymes, George Rhymes, a fourth round draft pick. And the Vikings are at the 43 yard line of the Bears, 57 yard return. Those Figures were impressive before he ran it back. They are much more impressive now. Some guys just have the knack. They can see the whole field. He accelerates at the right time. He has a good feel for the field. He cuts back against all of the flow. Got some very nice blocks. Minnesota has always been one of your finer special team teams. Buster Rhymes is earning his salary tonight. Ball in the 43-yard line. First down. That's Leo Lewis, the top of your screen. The speedster Anthony Carter split to the right. Kramer, what's Carter? And good defensive play on the part of Mike Richardson against Anthony Carter. That was not a good pass by Kramer. If he would have thrown that ball out there instead of trying to hit Carter on the line with that pass, Carter could have run under it because he was open. 
See, Carter's going to have to wait for this ball. This ball is thrown like a shorter pass. It's thrown on the line. And the defender was going through the ball, and that's those. That's a good example of those liberalized uh, passing rules now. That's what the crowd was booing about. But Richardson was playing the ball. No flag. It's second down and 10. 515 remaining. Hammer back again. Fires this time underneath, and Jordan coughs it up. Picked up in stride. Wilbur Marshall of the Bears comes up with it. Steve Jordan had the football momentarily, bobbled it, and Wilbur Marshall took it in full stride, and the Bears get it back. Don Rivera made the hit on that play. It caused the fumble. It didn't look like he really had good control of the ball. He was just trying to get it put away. And here you see Don Rivera coming in and, and laying a good lick on the helmet, hit the ball, and just knocked it free. And in full stride was Wilbur Marshall, so the Bears get the ball back at their own 45-yard line. Second interception, and the second fumble of the night. And there is Marshall, second-year man out of Florida. In that lineup because of the holdout on the part of linebacker Al Harris. This is Chicago Bear football. Get the turnover. This is Matsui. Matsui will have a first down. That will keep the clock moving, and now the Bears are are vitally interested in the clock ticking the seconds off. Yes, sir. It looks like, well, the Vikings uh, will need two scores to pull this game out, and that's exactly what the Bears want to do now is run that clock. That's so we've said it a couple times tonight, but he had a great career at Penn State. Father Steve was an All-American at Penn State and played with the Steelers. Kind of runs in the family. Suey really kind of subordinates his own talent to the great talent of Walter Payton. I don't see him carrying the ball that much. A tremendous blocker. Nifty little receiver out of the backfield. We're talking about number 26, Matt Suey. Suey. Works it inside the 40-yard line, a gain of four. It'll bring up second down and six. Chris Martin on the stop. Hayton, as we also said earlier, came into tonight's game with a couple of very sore ribs, so it could be that is one of the reasons we are seeing Matt Suey carry the ball a little more often than he usually does. Well, when you're averaging 5.7 yards a carry. Why not, huh? Second down and six. That's Suey once again. He'll have another first down for the Bears. Chris Martin made the stop. The Vikings still have an opportunity, but the Bears, when they brought Jim McMahon off the bench, it just turned everything around. Slipped in there, if you weren't with us, the very first play. He never even saw the completion as he was buried, but he stepped back and on his very first attempt and went 70 yards to Willie Go. The next time he put the ball in the air, he went 25 yards to Dennis McKinnon. And has really sparked this Bears football team, both offensively and defensively. Really giving the Bears defense a lift. Walter Payton inside the 30-yard line, held for three. Second down and seven and OJ, I know they don't bring him out of many ball games, but he's a little bit hurt coming into this one. What do you think about him staying on like this? Well, up until now, now that we're about two and a half minutes to go in the game, I think I'd take Walter off the field at this point. <laughs> I don't know that Walter would go off the <laughs> field yes, at this point. point knowing him. About Walter. I mentioned he's made a mini career out of the Vikings at the very top of the show. The most yards he's ever gained against one team has been the Vikings. And nearly 2,000 of his 13,000 plus have been made against the Vikings in 19 previous games. That's Suey for a couple. It'll be third down and six. But Walter Payton has had to step back tonight as Jim McMahon has moved out front and center with some brilliant heroics coming in in the third quarter. Two-minute warning. We'll be right back. And the man who brings up the Bears is totally responsible Jim McMahon he really sparked this football team in the third quarter Vikings 
Thinking blitz. Peyton over the right side. Down he goes. Martin was there along with Doug Martin for the stop. It'll be fourth down, and we should see Kevin Butler once again. He's already kicked four for tonight. This will tie the Chicago Bear record. The rookie from Georgia taking in a fourth round pick. Roger LeClaire and Mac Percival have five field goals for the Bears over their long and storied history. Kevin Butler looking to tie a Bear record and a tenth of 45 yards. Nope, hooks it to the left as he did from 35 yards out a little earlier. So the Vikings now have 150 remaining. They trail 33-24. They have two timeouts. Kevin Butler, I, I doubt if he even knows that he could have lodged himself in the Bear record book. Remarkable career, as I've touched on a couple of times already tonight. He had a 60-yarder against Clemson last year, so we know he has the distance. Twenty-seven yard line. Vikings have a first and ten. They trail by nine. They have the four wide receivers in. Mike Jones, Anthony Carter, Buster Rhymes, who's had a spectacular night, and Leo Lewis. Kramer. And this is when the Bears really pinned their ears back. That was Otis Wilson coming on the blitz. He was there. Richard Dent was there. And the loss is all the way back to the 19-yard line. Otis has been relatively quiet tonight. I haven't called his number myself very often. First time I've seen him get in on a tackle, really. Seconds ticking away. Tommy Kramer from the shotgun. Second down, long yardage. Time Kramer did get the time throwing deep, trying to get it to Leo Lewis. Almost picked off. Durison had a shot at it and couldn't handle it. Stops the clock with 134 and brings up third down and 18. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Long yardage, tough against the Bears. They average one sack in every seven opponents' attempt a year ago. Oh! Underthrown, Buster Rhymes' intended receiver. It'll be fourth down and long, and we presume that Tommy Kramer will stay on. With 130 remaining. That ball was underthrown, but it was a catchable ball. Unfortunately, Buster wasn't, wasn't watching. Would have been a first down, too, if he'd have turned around and caught it. That is unfortunate <laughs> when your receiver doesn't watch, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> yeah, you say, uh, we're going to have to have a little talk about this later on. Well, Buster Rhymes is had a spectacular night. He's made a couple of great catches, and he's been tremendous running back kickoffs. Fourth down. There's bring three in a deep prevent. Oh, wide open. And stepping out of bounds with the first down is Leo Lewis out near the 40-yard line. And sometimes that prevent can, <laughs> you just want to stuff it, really. Now, but the most important thing for the Bears right now, I know what their defensive thinking is. They do not want to allow a man to get behind him. Absolutely, but catch everything in front of me. It's so frustrating to watch sometimes. You do so well with your ordinary defense. And then you drop into something special, into the half, into the game. And just like that, Leo Lewis gets the first down. Kramer. In and out of the hands of Mike Jones. It'll be second down. Wilbur Marshall back there defending against Jones. Well, we can't count out Minnesota at this point, but it certainly appears as if they're going to lose this game. But, Joe, you said you were a little skeptical about this team. I think... I think we all agree right now that this Minnesota team is for real, and they'll be in the thick of the race for the rest of this season. Yes, I think so. They're a much, much improved football team over last year. As I mentioned, we'll see them twice more. We'll watch them against Green Bay October the 21st, and we'll see them against Miami early December. The Bears will be watching, and the Vikes, oh, of course, they move on to Buffalo. And another first down completion by Tommy Kramer, and it's Buster Rhymes. 
And there's two of the Vikes have Richard Dent down way upfield. They're back at the line of scrimmage. Well, Richard Dent started a little ruckus. The clock is stopped, though. What a smart move at one point. Time has been called by the Vikings. Tommy Kramer is pointing out what I alluded to, that a couple, Richard Dent and one of the Vikings, were having a little bit of a duel at the 30-yard line. Well, Dent was all over Ted Brown. He wouldn't let Ted Brown get up. And Big Curtis Rouse came down and took Dent off of, off of uh, Ted Brown. That's what's being explained to the official now. He was explaining that he wouldn't have had to use that timeout had not Richard Dent been holding Ted Brown on the artificial surface. Smart move by old Richard. No one's going to tell Tommy Kramer that he can't win this football game. You can tell it in his eyes. He's had a big night. But nevertheless, he trails 33-24. And it was a spectacular night for Jim McMahon, whom we did not expect to see. 58 seconds left. That's a lot of time. These guys can get another touchdown, and who knows? Onside kick, boom, field goal, hello. 34-33 game. Over the years, it's kind of been the trademark of these Minnesota Vikings, and there is Jim McMahon. Hey, they like him so much on this football team. His own teammates, talking to Gary Fensick today, there was no doubt in his mind that McMahon was going to play. We got to the stadium. We received word from the Bears officials that he would not play unless there was a catastrophe. Well, they measure catastrophe, I guess, in Chicago by eight points because they stuck him in in the third quarter when the Bears were eight points down. He's thrown three touchdown passes on the night. The Bears at the moment rather comfortable. 58 seconds remaining, leading 33-24. First down, Vikings near the 40-yard line of the Bears. Kramer. That's Lewis. He was bobbling it on the way out of bounds. Leslie Frazier hit him. It'll be second down. Now we have a holding call. It'll work against the Vikings. Down remains the same, so it's first and 20. Kramer. Good move by Leo Lewis. Made it look like a full all-out sprint. Got the defensive back Leslie Frazier in a stride for stride duel and then stepped to the outside. Not only gets the reception, but he gets the first down and stops the clock going out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Can't say enough about Leo Lewis. We saw him come into his own in a game that we had him in last year. Caught about six or seven passes in that game. He ended up their leading receiver with 47 receptions last year. Not a big kid, 5'8, 172 pounds, but he gets the job done. Smart player. I let him go about three or four years ago and then brought him back. And he has really developed. Not big at all. 5'8", 172 pounder. 46 seconds remaining. Leo Lewis flipped to the right. It's Anthony Carter top of your screen. Kramer. Picked off. Otis. Otis Wilson. There he is, Joe. He said you haven't heard much of him. Okay, Otis. Intended for Leo Lewis. They went there too often. That ball was deflected and Otis Wilson got it. Well, that was a ball that Leo would have gotten his head turned soon enough. He would have caught the ball because the ball was right on the money. Otis Wilson out of Louisville, University of Louisville. Tommy Kramer back to the drawing board and there's a look at Otis Wilson, the first round draft pick back in 1980. Going to keep that football. The Bears get it back. Vikings have one timeout. Kramer leaves the game 26 of 55, 436 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions. California has defeated the White Sox 8 to nothing. And Seattle is beating Kansas City in the ninth inning 5 to 4. That could turn into a flat footed tie as Jim McMahon goes down on one knee. The Vikings are not going to use their one timeout. And the man who turned this game into history was Jim McMahon. Bud Grant is back, however. The Vikings will fall to 2 and 1. The Bears will remain undefeated at 3 and 0. Oh. The team will watch twice more this year against Green Bay and then against Miami for Mike Ditka.
a good start here in 1985. The defending Central Division champions are 3-0.